A demon falls in love with the most innocent angel in the school. A stunning woman captures the attention of a young man with her blonde, shining hair. Her red eyes convey a certain disinterest. Her nose is thin and well-shaped, and her lips are the color of a cherry blossom. And it was in that moment that the young man realized, once and for all, that something was about to change their lives forever. It's May, where classmates gossip that a transfer student is arriving at school today. The girls are hopeful that the guy is handsome, while the boys find it strange that this is happening in the middle of the school year. Thus, the principal summons Masatora Akutsu to the classroom, and with tears in his eyes, he witnesses the class's astonishment as they lay eyes on the new guide who, despite being 16 years old, looks like a Dragon Ball Frieza who has been working in a warehouse for 25 years. Aware of the new student's condition, the principal explains that he didn't like having his head shaved and, by mistake, used his father's hair removal cream, thinking it was a hair tonic. As a fellow sufferer of baldness, the principal empathizes with the young man's plight. Next, he asks Akutsu to introduce himself, and with the confidence of an abandoned baby rat, he says, with the rhythmic cadence of death, that his hobby is strolling through pharmacies, and his favorite words are hair follicle. Finally, he vents that his recent days haven't been easy, but he hopes to make beautiful memories with everyone present. At this moment, the room becomes a sob fest followed by applause, and while all the students shout words of encouragement to the boy inside, he laughs at how pathetic humans are since none of them uncovered such a ridiculous lie. However, at that moment, the principal sees a tag coming out of the boy's head and pulls it without thinking, causing a wig to fall to the ground. Thus, the real Akatsu appears as if nothing had happened, conducted by an angelic background symphony, while the principal chides him for pulling a fast one on him. Seeing this aggressive reaction, Akatsu explains that his hair miraculously grew, and he plucks several tufts of hair to feign confusion, cursing his hair follicles and the room glitches with that situation. However, soon the spirits calm down and the school official asks the class to treat their new classmate well. When pointed to his seat in the room, Akatsu walks to the chair while being absolutely certain that no one suspects his true identity. In the midst of this, he is enchanted by the cuteness of a girl in the background, never imagining that a human could be so beautiful. In response to admiring looks, the girl returns a slight smile, causing Akatsu to awaken the bittersweet emotion of passion in his chest. With this, he loses rationality and control over his body, ending the journey to his seat with a broken neck style. Hours later, the boy is still distraught, and without taking his eyes off his beloved, he imagines how perfect his life would be if he had such an innocent and lovable creature by his side. He goes further, fantasizing in his head moments together with his beloved, like gaming in the dead of night, where she finally feels ready for other things. These fantasies evoke intense emotions in the young man, but he figures he can't just approach the girl outright since they barely know each other, and that could end up pushing her away. At this moment, another guy approaches the girl, calling her Lily and commenting on the pleasant breeze in this early spring. This romantic atmosphere always makes him think of her. Therefore, it would be great if they started dating. However, Lily uses her cattle scare ability, deflecting all the poor guy's advances. He panics and pleads for her to at least consider the proposal. Witnessing this humiliation, Yuba Tanagawa introduces himself to the new student and apologizes for the trouble the emotional guy, Hiroda, is causing. He explains that Hiroda has always been like this, declaring his love for any cute girl he encounters along the way, but lately, he seems a bit obsessed with Lily. And speaking of the devil, Hiroda joins the group, mentioning that he got kicked out again, and everyone heads to the hallway to catch up. Outside, Hiroda talks about how Akutsu's presentation scared the class a bit, but anything he wants to know, just ask. Skeezing the opportunity, Akutsu asks who the blonde girl at the back of the room is. Hiroda explains that she's Lilia Main, and she transferred to this school just before Akatsu. She's a Japanese mixed race and a Kikoku Shijo, Japanese who have always studied abroad until returning. Inside, Lily accepts a friend's invitation to prepare for today's piano exam, while Akatsu can't help but think about how short, cute, intelligent, and with a great personality she is, almost like more than human. Hearing this, Hiroda raises his finger and suggests that Akatsu meant to say she looks like an angel. However, just hearing that word, the new student shows strong irritation, surprising his new friends. But as Akatsu is fascinated by the blonde girl, Hiroda makes it clear that he will need to tank this decision since he himself has been kicked five times. In the first few attempts, he tried to ask calmly and politely, but as he was rejected, he started to appeal desperately, literally begging the girl to be with him. The problem is that he doesn't give up and continues humiliating himself for her attention. Therefore, the man with an unstoppable libido tries to approach Lily again, while Tanagawa holds him back and Akatsu is impressed by how Lily Amain arouses people around her. Over time, the protagonist is heading home, devising a plan to get closer to his crush until fate makes them bump into each other on some random corner. The girl came out of a dark alley, saying she got lost and ran into Akatsu. 
He realizes that this is a great opportunity to talk to her for the first time, so frying his brain to think of what to say, he says, hi, and mentions that his name is Akatsu. He immediately curses himself inside since it's obvious that the girl already knows that, but she finds the guy's attitude amusing and introduces herself, extending her hand to him. During the greeting, Akatsu notices that Lily's sleeve is torn, and when he mentions it, Amain becomes extremely uncomfortable and tries to avoid the subject until she emphasizes that their meeting this way was fate's doing, and only that cool tea could celebrate this event properly. The sweet words of his beloved hit his heart hard, but he keeps his focus and accepts the invitation with an experienced pose. Soon, the two are walking together, and after discovering that both their parents live abroad, Lily comments on how difficult it must be for a man to live alone, as dishes don't wash themselves and no washing machine usually picks up clothes from the room. But Akatsu is a functional guy and claims he takes care of all the household chores, so Lily makes it clear that any day he could invite her to prove he's telling the truth. The girl gets distracted, crosses the street without looking properly, until a truck speeds by and threatens to run her over. Trying to save Lily, Akatsu's eyes morph into a demonic expression and he stops the truck with the strength of his muscles, leaving Lily frightened by the marks on Akatsu's face. However, inexplicably, at that moment she lets out a brief smile. Around the accident, people begin to gather and call an ambulance, but instead of staying there, Lily pulls her friend by the arm and takes him away. In a late afternoon square, he says the pain in his shoulder is gone and Lily apologizes for causing all this confusion. As the boy replies that she didn't need to worry about it, Lily feels confident enough to ask who Akatsu really is because he stopped a truck with his shoulder and those ears and eyes aren't exactly human. At that moment, Akatsu enters a cosmic hell for having slipped up and revealed his identity so soon, but as the girl didn't seem to be reacting negatively to the possibility that he's not human, he decides that maybe he can share a secret or two. So he transforms part of his body and claims to be a demon, who ended up in the human world because Hell is losing a war against the angels. To try to reverse the situation, Akatsu's superior decided to appoint a charismatic leader to motivate the forces of Hell, and Akatsu is responsible for trying to find this leader, who will turn the game around. However, he hasn't found this leadership figure yet, but he would like Lily Amain to help him on this mission, occasionally descending to Hell to accompany him in this search. Even though Lily is a bit scared to know that demons really exist, she saw that Akatsu, despite being one, could also be kind enough to save her life. Still, she doesn't know how she could help as she doesn't have anything special, and maybe the people on the other side would get angry with her for some reason. Akatsu tries to convince the girl that it has nothing to do with it, that no one could get angry with someone as lovely as her. At that moment, Lily justifies her reasoning by immobilizing the boy with a magical chain, surprising him. Astounded, he asks who this girl really is, and after mocking the fact that the guy thought he could seduce her, Lily Amain releases her wings and reveals herself to be a servant of heaven, an angel. She continues to mock the demon, explaining how foolish she was to invite an enemy to hell without even realizing it. Akatsu tries to free himself from the chains, but the angel tells the boy to forget it, as these chains were manifested by her and few angels have the talent she has to create objects as resistant as she can. Nervous for having faced two demons in one day, she decides to poke the boy's eye with her finger as a form of torture. He doesn't understand why she mentioned two demons, so she explains that the tear in her sleeve was made by the demon she was defeating in the alley before meeting Akatsu. She let her guard down thinking the enemy couldn't touch her. But as he ruined Lily's clothes, she decided to humiliate the demon before exercising him slowly. Speaking of which, now she needs to decide how to exercise Akatsu. On the other hand, the young demon doesn't feel ashamed of being defeated by an enemy in a war after all he had the same intention as Lily. But as she humiliated one of his compatriots and angels are known for acting in this cowardly way, Akatsu is willing to put this stupid angel in his place. He tears off the chains and prepares to teach Lily not to underestimate demons. Although he demonstrated strength by freeing himself, Akatsu's attacks didn't seem enough to hit Lily, as the angel could easily dodge all the attacks without much effort. Finally, still without a drop of sweat, she chains the enemy once again, but acknowledges that Akatsu is a level above the common demons she eliminated, so it will be a pity to exercise someone like him. From this, Akatsu realized he had no way out, and as Lily summons a giant magical scythe, she asks the demon if he prefers to be erased now or if he reveals Hell's plans and leaves alive. As the boy doesn't believe the angel will spare his life, she raises the scythe to exorcise the opponent. But when he opens his eyes again, Lily had changed her mind. Instead of finishing off the demon right there, she will keep the devil under her supervision and force him to collaborate with her work. If he agrees, he gets a special collar made by a man herself. But the stubborn one still resists and asks why the girl wants to keep him as a doormat. She uses her charm again and responds that it's all to keep them close. 
Jokes aside, she explains that she will need him to get what she wants. She can't disclose all the details, but if he accepts, he will be set free. Angels cannot lie, but it's up to the guy to trust her or not. In the worst case scenario, he'll be lying on the ground until some ill-intentioned person takes a photo of him and shares it with the world. With that, he finally decides to cooperate, but before releasing the devil, she shows that the collar talk wasn't a lie and tries to collar the guy, who resists like an angry pincher. He begs for mercy, but Lily makes it clear that she doesn't have mercy. She wraps the accessory around a cuts his neck and threads the buckle through the hole, leaving the guy in a strange threshold between terror and satisfaction. Finally, Akatsu is under the control of the angel and couldn't return to hell as long as he was affected by the collar's effect. Therefore, Lily explains that Akatsu's role with his collar is to hunt other demons which angers the boy as he has to pursue beings of his own kind. Lily finds it ironic that demons have a sense of camaraderie, but Akatsu reveals that they have a society with their own rules and not everyone would betray those who have done good to them. However, despite this discourse of civility, Lily was ignoring the boy and complaining about split ends in her hair. This audacity drives the kid crazy with rage, but when he tries to remove his collar, the angel reveals that only she can take the accessory off his neck, and she suppresses Akatsu's demonic powers. Moreover, she discloses his location in case he tries to escape and allows her to control his movements. Therefore, if the demon refuses to cooperate, she can punish him however she wants. Using this control over Akatsu's body, the angel makes the demon perform a ridiculous act, apologizing for the delay in understanding her demands. Inside, Akatsu is burning with anger, but that doesn't stop his body from bowing to the girl and even fetching water to quench her thirst. Later, Lily is already using the boy as a servant and perhaps feeling bad for being treated like a queen for nothing. She offers some retribution to the demon, asking if he wants anything. Promptly, the boy crouches in a quadruped position and mentions how his body aches from all this servitude. Lily asks if he wants a massage on his backside and can't express it properly, but Akatsu replies that just a step of her foot would be more than enough. With this news, Akatsu is screaming internally within his enslaved body. To seize the opportunity, Lily comments on how this peculiar desire is typical of demons, so she promises to fulfill the young man's wish. However, as she was practically about to step on him, she starts questioning if all of this is right and if the strange taste of that demon will escalate into madness, leading her angelic delicacy down an irreversible path. Despite everything before any stepping occurs, a guard tries to stop the two miners who are engaging in improper acts in the middle of the public square, and they react by swiftly escaping. After evading the officer, Lily takes the chance to ask Akatsu once again if he still insists on not helping, especially after the commotion he caused in the square, warning him that next time she may worsen the punishments, even making him repeat that position without clothes. But Akatsu stands his ground and tells the angel to exercise him already, but as much as she would love to, she still needs the demon for some personal plans. Therefore, Akatsu needs to think again and decide whether to cooperate or suffer the consequences. This final proposal makes the demon notice the girl's ability to say such horrible things with that cute face, so he decides to give in a bit to Lily, offering to disclose the location of any nearby demon since they can sense the presence of their kind. Lily accepts but shows the young man what will happen if he doesn't do it right. With this, Akatsu apologizes to his fellow demons and inwardly begs that no demon dares to set foot on Earth for a while. Therefore, Lily declares Akatsu as her servant, but not without any reward. Since he is providing services to an angel, Lily promises to reform the demon into a righteous, honest, and kind being. As Akatsu is not very excited about this prize, the angel rethinks what every young person reaching adulthood would like to receive, offering a hug for each mission accomplished by the demon. He freaks out and calls Lily a curse, and she quickly backs off, saying she was joking and can't believe how this pervert believes she was serious. But since Akatsu doesn't want anything at all, Lily decides to think about payment later. At that moment, the guard finally catches up with them, and the escape continues until definitively losing the pursuer. Later that day, Akatsu is exhausted from the strenuous day and falls on his bed, thinking about how the first day of school was a disaster, with that cursed angel and her collar nonsense. But speaking of it, Akatsu notices that the accessory had simply disappeared. Before he could reflect on the matter, Lily Main sends numerous voice messages to the boy, saying a rap about how he may have left the collar, but the collar will never leave him. Therefore, Akatsu wonders how the heck this girl got his number, and Lily answers that question by text, explaining that she just took a little peek at the boy, realizing that she can even read his mind, it seems. And as if that wasn't enough, the collar left a permanent tattoo on the demon, and he didn't want to be seen with that nonsense in public, meaning Lily Amain ruined his dream of using the pool in peace. This was the last straw for the young demon, who decides to end this angel before she causes irreversible damage to hell. 
Meanwhile, Lily is communicating with someone, informing that today she found a beast-type demon who of course has already been exorcised. So yes, she's being cautious as always. After turning off her computer and admiring the moon, Lily boasts of finding a valuable demon among so many worthless ones, and that's why she can't exorcise him so easily. Once she masters the powers of this enemy, the entire heaven will notice her existence, and she will make everyone regret treating her that way. But for this to be a success, she needs to do exactly what Akatsu wants to do with Lily. At that moment, we go back to the day when Masatoru Akatsu is informed by his superior that he will be sent to the human world. As he well knows, Hell is suffering severe attacks from heaven, but instead of responding in kind, it seems that the demons are allowing the invasion to happen and practically admitting defeat. But this tragic situation cannot continue, so Akatsu must go up to Earth and find the most talented and charismatic leader the world has ever seen to reconnect the infernal forces under a single flag of an unquestionable figure. And this mission becomes increasingly necessary, and to prove her point, the superior shows a photo posted on the angel's social media, where one of them humiliates a demon and makes it clear that the hunting season has begun. In another example, an image shows a demon forced to buy drinks with a fake ID, only to be exposed and have to run from the police. Then she explains the case of another devil who was forced to reveal the suspicious history of his browser. These disturbing images break the young devil's heart, who kneels on the ground in front of such horrendous wickedness. And it's far from over, considering that angels are sending more and more henchmen to the human realm. They will likely be formidable enemies for Akutsu, but this mission cannot fail under any circumstances because there is no other chance. In other words, Masatoru Akutsu is Hell's last hope. So to accomplish the most difficult and important task in Hell's history, the one who decides to gift the demon hero the weapon befitting the significance of this mission. A leather scalp prosthesis. With this in hand, Akutsu must use this artifact to gain the sympathy and trust of humans. However, despite being adequately instructed, Akutsu managed to mess everything up and still feels like a loser every time he looks in the mirror and sees that tattoo the angel placed on his neck. Nevertheless, the demon remains firm and certain that everything will end once he defeats Lilia Main. Until Akutsu unintentionally follows a program called Sweet Husband and Wife and unexpectedly gets an insight into a perfect strategy to defeat his arch-rival. So the next day, the guy goes to school with a confident and stylish pose and his friends rush to see what's going on with him. Hirona comments that Akatsu's chin is even more pointed than yesterday, and it's unsettling to see. Despite the demon's visual makeover, Lily appears right behind him, attracting even more attention. Before turning to the angel, Akatsu remembers the plan he devised from the TV program. By binge-watching this series and reading numerous male fashion and beauty magazines, the demon learned to become as attractive as possible to seduce Lily Amain and make her bend to his will. Despite all this preparation, the girl was using the same strategy she learned on the TV show. So with her hair properly styled, shiny, and hydrated, Lily tries to charm Akatsu. But he doesn't lag behind and competes in beauty with the angel, who is amazed at the amount of glow that Kid is emitting. With both trying not to fall for each other, the initial duel is considered a draw. Shortly after, during math class, Lily returns an eraser that was on the floor to Akatsu, and a simple touch of his hand was enough for them to ignite again, starting a mortal duel for each other's hearts. Akatsu gains a slight advantage over his opponent, but Amain is smart and anticipates the adversary's move, landing a punch on his body. This was enough to disorient the demon, who falls face first into his chair with a fried brain. Lily boasts of her advantage, as she is 12,000 years more experienced than the young devil. But he doesn't give up and lovingly takes a loose hair strand from Lily's head. With this move, he manages to dodge a knockout hook and counter with a well-placed punch to Amain's stomach. His partial defeat enrages the angel and signs that this cold war was only just beginning to become increasingly evident. A few hours later, Amain was tasked with taking a stack of papers to the faculty room, and since it was very heavy, the teacher suggested she ask a boy for help. And that was the opportunity to throw another charm at Akatsu, this time grabbing his sleeve. This time, the intensity of the blow was frightening and with a fake hook, Amain hits the opponent's face with unbelievable force. However, he withstands the impact and rises again, getting close to the opponent and rolling up his sleeves to carry that heavy stack of papers. This trick exposes the muscles and veins of the guy's forearm, causing damage to Lily. Akatsu breaks Amain's guard with an uppercut and manages to hit her face with another punch, making her lose balance as well. The exchange was becoming increasingly balanced and Lily noticed that this battle would not be as simple as she thought. After this first round of victories and defeats, both competitors are still confident in their success. So, if the days pass and the intensity rises even more with Akutsu unbuttoning his shirt collar and Lily countering with an ice cream attack. Both become more offensive and vulnerable, causing consistent damage to each other. But before declaring a draw, Lily Amain was sure that a final plan could work. 
Soon both are at the back of the classroom practically exhausted and the teacher invites the girl to write the answer to a math question on the board. She goes to the board, obsessed with the idea of bringing down her rival, and after answering the exercises, she returns to her seat, but before that, pretends to stumble and falls on Akatsu's chest. With this move, she puts the enemy in check, staggering from the force of the blow he took. Then Lily uses all of her cuteness to apologize in the sweetest way possible, and that was the opening to break through Akatsu's guard, sway in front of the man and throwing punch after punch at his body. The crowd around gets excited, and everyone seems certain of Amain's victory, but before the final blow, the teacher stops them and asks who they think they are to flirt in the middle of class. Thus, the round ends and no fighter claims victory, and aware of the opponent's strength, both fighters decide on a truce. A few days later, Lily is waiting for a katsu for a date, and as soon as a hand pokes her from behind, the girl turns around ranting about the guy's hug. But instead of a katsu, two unknown people with bizarre behavior are right behind the girl. The two boofballs claim to be bored, so they invite the girl to take a little stroll with them. Lily uses her charm to say she's already waiting for someone, but with that abandoned kitten face only she knows how to make. The two guys are enchanted by her cuteness, and insist on having tea with the girl while her companion doesn't arrive. But right behind them is the mentioned demon, and he warns the two guys not to push too hard or she'll end up breaking and that a girl is like a blade under a microscope. With these words, the duo realizes there's a really cool guy there, so amazing that he says the kind of poetic thing that nobody understands but must make sense. So Akatsu gives his girl the green pig bear, explaining that being late is part of a hero's nature. But Lily puts an end to that attitude by hitting him on the head with a plush, making the intruders run away in fear. Akatsu points out that it not only hurt, but Lily also left the plush squashed like a potato in a press. The angel asks if he wants to be part of the mashed potatoes. Then, Akatsu changes the focus and interrupts their walk, thoughtfully observing the girl like one of those ancient Greek statues. He notices that Lily is very well dressed, and she retorts that she doesn't usually go on dates, so she doesn't know the limits of this kind of thing. Akatsu continues analyzing the girl from top to bottom, and awkwardly, Lily Amain mutters quietly that this demon is quite perverted. From that moment on, he realizes he went a little too far and argues that he was just surprised as she's giving off that same lightness and grace vibe as always. At this moment, the girl grabs Akatsu by the collar and demands that he never touch on that subject again. Otherwise, while he's in class during a break or even using the bathroom, she will make him suffer the wrath of the angelic leash. And who knows, maybe in the morning, he'll wake up in an erotic scene between him and that bald math teacher. After leaving the poor guy on his knees with such a disgusting threat, she turns her back and talks about exercising demons in the morning as if it were a walk in the park. This makes him remember that cooperating with this crazy girl is a huge betrayal, and if anyone finds out, he'll be screwed. Next, Akatsu asks where they're going now, and Lily points to a dog attack alert on the wall, stating that this epidemic might have some demon behind it. Since the municipality posted a map of incidents on the internet, Lily has the clues to find those responsible. Then the angel asks how far Akatsu can identify another demon. He informs her that he can detect the strongest ones from far away, as long as they're not hiding their own power to avoid being discovered. In other words, if she's looking for a weaker link, it'll have to get closer. For this reason, Lily comments that maybe this Akatsu guy is useless, leaving the boy infuriated with the insult. At that moment, he feels something strange but keeps quiet about it. Lily reminds him that it's not a good idea to deceive her, but this is something and Akatsu knows that well. Soon, they set out to search for any diabolical presence, but Akatsu doesn't perceive the presence of any demons. Hours later, the dude takes a break to eat and Akatsu comments that the girl will end up becoming Lely Round if she keeps eating like that. So she shakes the boy while reminding him that he can't treat the savior of his life like that. However, at that moment, Akatsu feels a disturbing presence, and even though Lily suspects it's just an excuse to avoid getting scolded, they soon see Kensaku Hirota banging his head against the wall and lamenting the fact that his beloved is on a date with another guy. But before the poor guy suffers a head injury, the dude invites him to sit down and explains that it's not like that. So he calms down after hitting his forehead against the window 24 times. Lily says she was just showing the city to Akatsu, and Hirota warns that he could have done that too if he had asked. He tells the friend not to be so shy and to invite partners to hang out from time to time. Finally, he admits that he was feeling a little jealous of the two together in the diner, but it won't make him pull his hair out, as at that moment, he was having a cool date with a nice girl, and he just took a break to say hi to his friends. And speaking of the girl, Yuka Tanahashi enters the diner scolding Hirota because he left her waiting outside to chat with the others. To try to cut the heavy atmosphere, the guy introduces his classmates to his girlfriend. But as soon as Hirota mentions Lily Amain's name, Yuka comments that it's this shorty he keeps talking about all the time and she thought she was still in middle school. 
His audacity sparks instant rage within the angel, but Lily keeps up appearances and replies that it's a pleasure to meet Yuka. The girl shrugs it off and maintains the same indifferent posture when Akatsu introduces himself. Then, Lily asks Hirota to tell who this charming girl is, and he introduces Yuka only as an old friend. In the same second, Yuka corrects him and claims to be his girlfriend, driving the boy crazy. Lily takes advantage of the situation to say that it's not very cool of him to have a girlfriend and keep hitting on her every now and then. Hearing this, Yuka explodes and drags her boyfriend out by the ear, demanding explanations for this story. Akatsu didn't think it was cool for Lily to stir up trouble like that, but the angel felt fulfilled avenging herself against that girl for being so audacious. And after that circus, Lily gets tired and says she's had enough for today, so Akatsu should let her know if he detects any demons fooling around or else he'll regret it. But as soon as the angel leaves, a diabolical presence shows up at the table, while Akatsu complains that the girl didn't even pay her share of the meal. However, when he goes to the cashier, the employee informs him that the bill has already been paid and Akatsu feels embarrassed because Lily played the role of the man in the situation. On the next day, Lily Amain is facing a demon, brandishing her intimidating scythe, declaring how she will exorcise that devil mercilessly, while Akatsu watches the scene, feeling ashamed for leading the enemy to an ally. However, he soon wakes up from this nightmare and breathes a sigh of relief. During school hours, Yuka sits in front of Lily and apologizes for the small mistake she made with those nasty comments about the blonde. Inside, Lily is seething with rage and returns the sarcasm, saying that Yuka also shouldn't have dropped that bomb in the middle of everyone, causing such a tragic breakup. Yuka backs down and reveals that she and Hirota were just friends, not bothered by this small situation. Furthermore, she mentions studying in the adjacent classroom and suggests that despite yesterday's misunderstanding, she and Lily should be friends. Lily maintains her composure, responding that she would love that. In the meantime, Akatsu is baffled by the show of insincerity until Yuka bids a polite farewell. As soon as the girl leaves, Lily is boiling with hatred, stating that Yuka deliberately used the word small several times, and she will make her suffer for it. A few hours later during the break, Akatsu recalls his nightmare and how the angel acted similarly while exercising the demon, humiliating the victim without remorse. At that moment, his two friends find him after searching the entire school. Concerned about Akatsu's isolation, they ask what's going on. Akatsu can't tell the truth for obvious reasons, so he invents a lie about having frequent dreams about an older woman he knows, making it difficult for him to sleep. Himuruna and Tanigawa suspect that Akatsu is in love, and despite his denials, they laugh at him as they didn't expect such a thing from Akatsu. The fact that he can't sleep because of dreaming about a woman makes him seem like he's still in middle school. However, the idea of an older woman surprises them as they thought Akatsu had a crush on Lily. Hirota even suggests that if it were her, he and Akatsu would be crush buddies. The demon wonders if such a situation among friends should be awkward, but Hirota is indifferent, claiming not to care about who likes whom. He would like to give Akatsu some love advice, but confesses that he has never approached a girl that way. Akatsu asked about yesterday's situation, and Hirota explains that Yuka is just an old friend, and he was accompanying her while shopping. Speaking of Yuka, Hirota mentions that he tries to flirt with other girls, but Tanahashi always ruins the atmosphere, chasing away potential dates. Akatsu asks why he doesn't date Tanahashi, given the situation, and Hirota is at a loss for words, admitting he has various reasons for that. Meanwhile, Lily Amain is hunting demons in the square, inviting Akatsu to serve as a radar. However, he replies via message that he has a stomachache. Lily doesn't insist and sits to rest after two hours of searching, lamenting that she can't simply extract Akatsu's perception power. Instead of attracting her prey, Yuka Tanahashi approaches, surprising the angel. Lily almost lets her disdain show but maintains a forced smile, pretending to be happy about this unexpected encounter. Yuka mentions that she was hanging out with Hirota and saw Lily on the way back, so she invited her for a stroll later. Although Amain wants to crush this girl's organs, she knows it's not advantageous to create unnecessary conflicts with humans and attract negative attention. Therefore, she accepts the invitation with a forced smile, and the two proceed to choose clothes together. Arriving at the store, Yuka deliberately picks out oversized clothes for Lily and pushes her into the fitting room. As soon as the blonde reveals her new style, Yuka laughs at the angel's size. Lily plays dumb again and closes the fitting room to change back, knowing well that it was a declaration of war and that Yuka is trying to mock her at any cost. She then turns the tables on Yuka, making her experience the same treatment and feel what it's like to be at war with an angel. Since they know exactly how the human mind works, attacking the psychological aspects of such unstable enemies is not a significant challenge. For this reason, Lily offers Yuka a larger skirt, and since she has that protruding belly, it will surely fit. Despite being a child's skirt, the width of 56 centimeters seems tailor-made for her. 
Feeling the pressure of fat shaming, Yuka suggests they leave and the Cold War takes a new turn. Shortly after, Lily shows Yuka at the weight loss magazine, while Yuka responds with an article on how to raise a child healthily. Next, Yuka takes Lily to a Purikura session, a photo booth where friends can take pictures and edit them with drawings and effects. Yuka's intention is to play around with the edits and make the photos as grotesque as possible to traumatize Lily, but the blondes seems interested in the activity. After the Purikura, Lily starts sending messages again, demanding the presence of her servant while the two take a break for a snack. Yuka suggests that Lily put the photos in a notebook or something similar, and gradually the angel begins to win over the other girl with her charm, playing the absent-minded girl who needs help. This causes Yuka to lower her guard, and during the conversation, she admits that she invited Lily just to keep the enemy close and get to know her. After all, Lily has always been what boys desire most in a girl, and Yuka is the opposite of that. But still, she felt that the two could be friends despite everything. In turn, Lily admits that she also had fun that day, so she feels comfortable saying that she feels no attraction to Hiroda. Yuka already suspected this and comments that Kensuko has always been very eager. But even after the two apologize sincerely for the incident in the cafeteria, Yuka still feels like she's competing with Lily as a woman. After all, Lily has a very high feminine power, being beautiful, charming, and having long eyelashes. Upon hearing these words, Lily didn't feel like she was lying, so she began to think that maybe Yuka has some kindness inside. In the meantime, Yuka remembers that she has another commitment and says goodbye, leaving Lily with a strawberry milk candy that aids growth. As the girl leaves, Amain is angry at being provoked even after this reconciliation. But anyway, she looks at the photos they took together and decides to forgive the girl for today being enjoyable. Some time later, Lily felt lightened by the moments of friendship she had, and she even decided to release her servant from work today, telling him to take his medicine and rest. On the other hand, Akatsu doesn't believe that the angel is concerned about him, so he rushes to see what's going on. As soon as he catches up with Lily, Akatsu says that his stomach ache is gone, but since he didn't say this over the phone before running over, Lily comments that the demon is not the type who knows how to lie. Speaking of which, she's tired of small talk and tells Akatsu to locate the demon he's sensing, and that will happen as soon as she changes her clothes. Shortly after, she meets her target and introduces herself as the Reaper of Evil and the natural enemy of demons. So, a battle between the two begins and Lily is frustrated for not being able to hit the wolf. Arrogant as she is, she loses patience and tells the owner to admit soon that he has no chance against her and to surrender. While Akatsu waits around the corner for the girl to do her job, the wolf asks why the angel wants to kill him. So Lily says she heard that some dogs in the neighborhood have been attacking women in the city, and she asks if it was the demon wolf who did that. The beast smiles and responds that he can tell, but the angel has to defeat him first. To ensure he wouldn't need to spill the beans, the demon assumes his true form, revealing a humanoid wolf with a graceful waist movement. The demon comments that he understands the girl is too terrified to say anything, but before he continues his speech, Lily hits the creature with the scythe, complaining that this fantasy is too vulgar. In the meantime, Akatsu is giving his colleague a massage, while he complains that he just wanted to get into the summer trend with this outfit. However, Akatsu is careless leaving his hiding spot and the wolf noticed that the boy was a demon. He questions why a demon is helping an angel, but as Akatsu couldn't justify it, the wolf orders the traitor to attack Lily as a proof of loyalty. Seeing this threat, the angel quickly steps forward and warns that if Akatsu attacks, he will be exercised too. Meanwhile, the guy is trying to calm everyone down, arguing that the best way to resolve conflicts is through dialogue. Like in those games where you have to press the button several times to fill the heart, our souls are filled with love when we solve our problems through conversation. However, while Akatsu tried to convince them not to brawl, they had already been in the middle of a brawl for some time, each one saying how stupid that guy is for trying to push this peace and love talk in such a situation. As both refuse to accept the proposal, Akatsu decides to share some of his love with them, attempting to soften their violent hearts and revealing his summer outfit underneath his clothes, he improvises a song about compassion and empathy. Then he throws the microphone to the audience and asks what they feel after this performance. The wolf comments first that the boy is really an idiot, laughing at his microphone. But instead of mocking the guy, the wolf takes the microphone and improvises his song back to him, extolling how much better his life would be if he hadn't met this kid. And upon hearing the song, the wolf recognizes how repugnant angels can be because even though Lily wants Akatsu as a partner, she despises him in this way. However, the battle continues and Akatsu takes the microphone back. But instead of responding musically, he cries and expresses his feelings, saying that the girl didn't mean to say those ugly things. He throws the microphone back to the angel, who speaks with some rhymes that if he wants to be heard, he has to be clearer in his speech. 
Watching the battle, the wolf notices that the little demon has been fighting for him from the beginning, distracting the evil angel so she wouldn't attack him. This discovery softened the wolf's heart, and when Akatsu was on his knees in tears, announcing that he can't take those insults from Lily anymore, the wolf holds the microphone and says that the boy has done enough for today, and besides thanking Akatsu for everything he did for him, the wolf also starts crying and the two demons hug tightly. Then Lily sings on the microphone that she'll leave them to sort things out while she takes a break from all this nonsense. Sometime later, Lily asks the demon wolf what he's looking for around there. He replies that he was looking for new fashion magazines as one day he learned about the existence of those spat pants that shaped the thighs and buttocks. At first, the wolf was satisfied just seeing women wearing those pants and magazines, but a violent feeling rose in his head, and the demon began attacking women in spat pants on the streets. Despite that, he eventually found out that his victims weren't wearing spat pants, but leggings. Faced with this, Akatsu and Lily scratch their heads while discovering that spat and leggings are two different things. After the explanation, the angel decides to end the demon and put him in a state of grace. With her scythe, she summons a portal that gradually dissolves the wolf's body, and the beast thanks Akatsu for caring about him. However, only after the wolf had been exorcised could Akatsu admit that he had done all that for himself. Despite the drama, soon the boy discovers that the demon turned into a cute little puppy, and after Lily takes some photos of the little one, she hands him over to Miss Kearney, the leader of a voluntary organization for rescuing dogs and cats. After this moment, Akatsu asks Lily what exactly she did to that demon, and the angel explains that she sealed his wicked powers and thoughts. In the case of a humanoid like that, they become pets and are handed over to some organization like Miss Kearney's because Heaven doesn't know what to do with them. In the end, Lily comments that she takes no pleasure in killing demons, but she can't speak for all angels. Akatsu takes advantage of this confession to ask why Lily hit the ground with that giant scythe, so she replies that she didn't do it on purpose, and that concrete rising from the ground was just an illusion to scare the demon, and even if the scythe had hit him, it wouldn't have hurt for real. But Akatsu isn't convinced that Lily really doesn't harm evil creatures, so he asked about that day when she said she humiliated and exorcised a demon slowly on the day they met. Then Lily shows her cell phone with a picture of another puppy, saying that this is the beast she mentioned and that she even drew an eyebrow on the little one to get him adopted faster. Moreover, she threatens to draw eyebrows on Akatsu if he keeps being so annoying with her, and so the girl goes away. As she leaves, Akatsu realizes that this angel is very different from what he always thought angels were like. After all, Lily not only leaves demons alive, but also takes pictures with them, giving that genuine smile of joy. However, Akatsu remembers those photos of angels committing atrocities and wonders if only Lily is this peaceful. The girl turns around and decides to buy a snack for Akatsu as a gesture for the services he provided. However, since the guy was immersed in his thoughts, he decides to ask whether only Lily is kind in that way or if all angels have that characteristic. The girl takes the opportunity to boast, ironically pointing out how Akatsu has just now realized how kind she is. Seeing this reaction, the demon comments that he was quite foolish to make that remark, and Lily wholeheartedly agrees. At that moment, she turns and starts walking again, inviting the boy to follow her while reflecting on how someone called her kind, even in her original form as no one had ever done that before. And when Meg falls, Akatsu and Lily are together in a moment of affection. The girl promises to reward him for everything he has done for her. And just as the boy pouts to kiss her, he wakes up in the classroom with his bald teacher admiring the boy's ability to always sleep in his classes, and as a reward, the protagonist gets a punch in the head. With about the size of an ostrich egg, Akatsu goes back to the back of the classroom and remembers that he has been dreaming about Lilia Main since the first day they met, and that his heart pounded very hard the first time he noticed her. With this feeling in his head, Akatsu tries to write in his notebook what he's feeling, but soon realizes that he's a demon having romantic feelings, not to mention being in love with an enemy, so he has a brief identity crisis. But even when he gets home, Akatsu is still thinking about the girl, and gradually he recognizes that Amain is driving him crazy, and there's not much he can do about it. Until, in the middle of the night, someone knocks on the door, and there's Liz, the head of the Department of Hell. She scolds Akatsu, saying you're being lazy just because there's no class today. Soon, he welcomes the woman, and she informs him that she came to deliver a new school uniform that matches the season, as is the tradition of the city. In addition, the superior asks how his subordinate's mission is going. In fact, Akatsu had forgotten that he had this responsibility to find a charismatic leader to lead Hell in the war, so the demon gets a little lost in his response and not wanting to leave everything blank, he says that he found a candidate, but even though he looks great, his personality is horrible. And while Akatsu describes the candidate, he can only think of Lilia Main. Liz responds that it's okay if he hasn't found the leader yet, but it would be good to hurry, because the war is getting more complicated. 
Then she warns that she'll have to sleep at Akatsu's house because the department doesn't have the money to cover her accommodation. Soon, she enters the room and informs that she will change, and with no time to think about everything that is happening in his life, Akatsu begins to lose his mind when he realizes that there is another problem to solve, because clearly, this is a case of forbidden love between the employee and the superior. However, contrary to everything he was imagining in his head, Liz had brought a huge sleeping bag that wraps her entire body like a cocoon, and so they sleep separately. The next day, Liz informs Akatsu that today they will go out for training. The hours pass, and Akatsu is approaching two friends on the street like a weirdo, only to be rejected mercilessly. Because of this embarrassment, Liz advises the employee that he has to think more before choosing the representative of the demons because he needs to make sure that this person is determined enough to go down to hell and fulfill his duties. And while Akatsu can't get Lilia Mayne out of his mind, Liz adds that this person also has to have all the conviction in the world to lead the forces of evil. Later. With these pieces of advice in mind, Akatsu approaches another girl on the street and resorts to a fake photo of his abandoned pet. The girl says she didn't see the puppy, but Akatsu appeals even more, saying that the girl should let him know if she sees the dog because his little sister can't eat since the dog disappeared. And since then, she has contracted terrible diseases. Seeing this humiliation, the girl is startled and agrees to ask all her friends about the pet. So she ends up asking for Akatsu's number. Then Liz advises that Akatsu did well, but it would be even better if you could exploit the loophole that every woman has inside her because having a strategy is focusing on a specific point. So he follows the hunch and begins to enchant all the women on the street, until Liz asks him to approach one more and ask her to have tea with him. Therefore, Akatsu catches the attention of the girl, and as soon as she turns, he realizes it's Yuka. She immediately thinks he's hitting on her, so even before he says anything, she agrees to have something with him, but only if he pays. Meanwhile, Lily had slept the whole day and realizes that she won't have time to hunt demons today, so she decides to wash some clothes. Akatsu and Yuka are now at a bar drinking orange juice, and Akatsu communicates with the boss to know the next steps, but Liz is asking him to give her some time while she flips through a book, so Akatsu realizes that she had been reading all this in a manual from the beginning. For this reason, he tries to handle the situation on the spot, but as soon as Yuka asks if he likes Lily, the boy falls apart. She insists on the subject, but he continues to say no, and to avoid this topic, he asks if Hirota still has a chance with her, and Yuka reveals that a relationship is difficult because they are childhood friends. At that moment, Akatsu turns into an advisor like Liz and copies her ready-made phrase, saying that having a strategy is focusing on a specific point. With that, Yuka seems to understand the meaning of it, although there isn't any, and she interprets that she is concentrating forces on the wrong person, so she thanks Akatsu for the help. Liz instructs Akatsu to go further, telling him to invite Yuka to the park at night, otherwise he will fail the training. He goes crazy for having to flirt with a girl who has a crush on his friend, but he has no choice, so he makes the invitation. In the meantime, Lily washed clothes in the cold, so it seems like she caught a cold. Therefore, she tries to warm up at that moment. Later, Akatsu and Yuka are walking together in the park, but both are visibly awkward. In the end, they almost don't even talk until Yuka promises not to tell anyone about this meeting and quickly leaves. At that moment, Liz arrives and praises her subordinate's training, as well as informing him that she is leaving for now. However, there is something important she needs to say. Akatsu flirted with the bartender in front of Yuka, and it's not cool to do that. However, it was that tiny angel accidentally activating the collar by sneezing on the command device, but Akatsu can't say that to Liz at all, so he ends up taking the blame. The head of the Department of Hell leaves, and after learning so much in the art of dialogue with women, the demon feels that he has gained a new breath to deal with Lilia Mayne and her angelic stubbornness. And speaking of the devil, the girl is looking at herself in the mirror, feeling quite attractive, perhaps capable of making Akatsu fall for her in this way, because then everything would be easier for her. But despite this beauty, Amain herself is feeling inferior to the intense charm that Devil has been radiating in recent days, because the boy truly possesses the seizing and spice of love on his shoulders. However, Lily knows Akatsu. She knows he's not like that, maybe it's just a phase or something of that sort. Yeah, this phase might be enough to catch the angel off guard, as a simple touch of the boy's hand on Lily's face makes her combust. At this moment, she is about to surrender, but a trump card still plays a decisive role in this struggle, the collar. Knowing this, Lily Amain wavels her fingers in front of Akutsu to show the activation device, wondering how she's going to activate this thing. Still, the boy sighs as if he doesn't believe she can do it or worse yet, thinks she'll like him to the point of not wanting to use the collar. These thoughts consume the mind of the poor girl, who seems more and more unsure of what to do next. In an improvisational move, she tries the clumsy and innocent running strategy to surprise her victim, waving to the young devil and asking if he saw Professor Shiromura. With the sweet charm of her helpless gaze, Lily provokes another round between her ego Theum and the devil's Joe. 
This time, Fam attacks Joe, Akatsu's ego, with speed. Despite the cat's incredible speed, the dog dodges with alarming ease, making Lily pass through the corridor as if she were nobody in the eyes of the charming boy, who casually informs that Shiromura is in the teacher's room. With the result, Lily awkwardly thanks him and analyzes why her flirtation didn't work. Did she miss the angle? Or maybe it wasn't natural enough after all, it's been a while since she practiced, as most boys have always fallen for her, without much effort. In the end, it was probably just a coincidence, Akatsu will still succumb to the angel's sauce. However, life doesn't seem easier for Lily as the days go by. When she suggests that her classmate helps her tie her hair, he responds without even looking back that it must be difficult to manage that mane, keeping Joe dodging every blow dealt by Thiam. Later, she unbuttons a button on her blouse due to the heat, but only Hirota seems interested in the move. Akatsu is trying to cool off with a glass of water next to his friend Tanagoa. Meanwhile, Joe continues to escape unscathed from a main's boxing cat, leaving her wondering what to do. Then Akatsu himself reappears, asking if the girl gave up tying her hair because the ponytail suits her well. With this move, he turns his head 60 degrees to the left and sends a charming look, making Thiam retreat instantly to catch her breath. Joe takes advantage to advance, but the cat is saved by the bell with the end-of-round alarm. After another failure, Lily begins to despair, unaware that she is falling into Akatsu's plans like a duck. But since it's like that, she has no choice but to resort to her trump card, the mount. So she gains momentum from the walls and leaps at speed, to try to land in a dubious position on her opponent. Using the force of this technique, Thuyan prepares for the final blow against Joe. However, against all expectations, Akatsu tames the maiden in the air and prevents her fall like a true gentleman. Moreover, he asks if she got hurt, concluding that it wouldn't be good for such a pretty face to be injured. Thus, Thiam takes a hook to the chin and concedes defeat to Lily, sprawled on the ground. On the other side of the ring, Joe and Akatsu question whether the angel really thought the same tactic would work twice, then affirm with a serious expression that Emane underestimated the devils. Corner, the girl tries to escape, but the boy insists that she go to the infirmary to check if anything more serious happened to her. Waiting outside, Akatsu is proud of himself and praises his superior, Liz, for the imminent victory. Meanwhile, the demon herself is focused on her work, an essential part of which is checking if her subordinate is performing well. Therefore, she needs to develop her disguises even more, which are an essential part of well-executed espionage. At this moment, dressing as a high school student will be the best way to closely observe young Akatsu's performance. But while Liz hasn't arrived, Amane leaves the infirmary without major complications, but with a basic thirst on a hot afternoon. Akatsu is prepared and has his own water bottle but offers to buy another one for his classmate. Despite this, Lily can't wait to quench her thirst, so she takes the boy's bottle and threatens to drink from the next, saying as innocently as possible that it looks like an indirect kiss. At this moment, Akatsu turns his head and covers his mouth with his hand, while Lily hopes to see the enemy's heart melt. Instead, Akatsu pretends to be embarrassed and calls the girl an idiot, telling her to stop saying such things, leaving her embarrassed. But through the demon's fingers, she saw that he was laughing, so to get back at him, she decides to use the same trick again. However, the demon had already rented a penthouse in the angel's mind, and Lily couldn't concentrate on what she was doing. Gathering her last strength, she taps into her inner power and rises once again alongside Thiam, who confirms that he can return to the fight. So she returns the bottle to her opponent and says she'd rather buy another one later. But with her chains, she cuts the bottle in half in the air, letting all the water fall on her body. Using the strategy of this sexy wet body, Lily hopes again for a satisfactory result. However, once again, Akatsu proves to be the master of improvisation, throwing his jacket into the air which falls perfectly over the girl's shoulders. And to prevent her from catching a cold, he winks and says she can keep the jacket. In this way, Thiam takes another hook and falls to the ground. Lily, in turn, is frying her brain in the middle of class due to so many consecutive defeats, feeling so bad that the smoke she exudes causes concern for Yuka, who comes to see how her friend is doing. Not functioning properly, Lily asks if there is any way to crush a man's heart, and Hirota's ex gives her an idea by showing her phone screen. Later, Lily changes plans to hunt demons and decides to invite Akatsu to her house with a bag full of things. Akatsu, not a fool, knows he needs to be careful with the girl's intention, who claims she'll only cook for the demon in exchange for his services. Arriving at the girl's building, he is surprised by the size of her house compared to his humble abode. Despite thinking he would maintain his composure in the face of a main scheme, he feels that the worst is yet to come and starts acting strangely in someone else's house. At this moment, Lily questions the boy's behavior while donning a chef's apron. Akatsu is taken aback but promises not to succumb to the pressure and both Joe and Theum return to balancing the confrontation. Akatsu understands that the girl is at home and should feel comfortable, but wearing just an apron is a bit much. 
However, Lily turns the tables and proves that the guy was completely mistaken. Soon, the dish arrives and Akatsu is surprised by the quality, which offends Lily. Then the stove beeps and she asks the boy to start eating without her. Even though he thought it wouldn't be a big deal, the delicious aroma of the meal gently invaded his nostrils, creating a whirlwind of descriptions in his mind about how wonderful the food is. As if that weren't enough, that was just an appetizer, so Lily puts the main course on the table. Akatsu asks if the girl likes Italian pasta. When she replies that she likes it so much that she eats it four times a week, Akatsu questions if she doesn't think she should balance her diet a bit. Lily doesn't pay much attention but imagines it's a trick of the demon, so she asks what he usually eats. Proudly, Akatsu says there's nothing better than a bell pepper with tempura stuffed with meat. With that, Lily takes the opportunity to launch a counterattack, laughing and saying that a bell pepper is not a real meal, while Akatsu tries to defend the versatility of his beloved dish. But it's too late, the demon had fallen completely into the girl's trap. In the meantime, Joe and Theon were waiting for the next round in the ring, but decide to drop their gloves, agreeing that they can't fight under these circumstances. Akatsu and Lily decide what to do after lunch, and the boy is eager to watch a movie that was lying around. Lily throws a fit, complaining that she doesn't want to watch that movie again because it has too many bugs in it. Paying attention, Akatsu discovers an angel's weak point, which covers her mouth as soon as she realizes, but it's too late. So Thiam and Joe watch the lovebirds forcefully fighting over the DVD to see if Lily would escape this embarrassment or if Akatsu could expose a fear of the girl in front of his eyes. And in the midst of this confusion, the dog and the cat wonder when this couple will resolve things between them. By night, the duo is watching a romantic movie that Lily rented and Akatsu realizes that she is still a girl, even though she's an angel. And with a dark atmosphere, where things dangerously become more intimate, Akatsu reflects on an emergency exit. However, after the movie couple finally kisses, they get to the point, while Akatsu despairs to maintain his composure and complains that the fictional couple is doing this kind of thing in front of innocent teenagers. To check the opposite side, Akatsu turns his face to Lily, who has a red face and is looking back at him. But soon both turn their heads and make excuses to justify why they were looking at each other. Lily just wanted to check the time on the wall clock and Akatsu was just stretching his neck to the right. Next, the girl tries to escape the awkward situation by grabbing a soda and ends up stumbling. Akatsu tries to prevent the fall but falls with her, while Joe and Theum are in anticipation of a resolution to this story. Faced with all this, Akatsu's body stopped responding to his brain, he seemed resigned to the situation he was in. While his mouth became increasingly dry and he asked why Lily hadn't cursed at him as she always does. The girl is not in a condition to say a word, while the guy is sucked into an uncontrollable desire to fulfill his wish. So he touches the girl's face with his hand to kiss her until an alarm goes off on a man's phone. They both get a big fright, but Akatsu returns to the position he was in. Therefore, Lily politely asks him if he can excuse her to turn off the alarm. After that, the girl adjusts her clothes and says it's already late, remembering the almost kiss. Her mind fries again in a mix of desire and hatred, while the guy gets up awkwardly and says it might really be time for him to leave. After Akatsu leaves, Lilia Main contacts her superiors again and finishes her scheduled report. Then she starts thinking again about what just happened and wonders what got into her head. However, as stubborn as she is about her feelings, her heart continues to beat very strongly. Therefore, she realizes that something is wrong because she had never felt this way before. Every time she remembers the scene, she feels a tightness in her chest. Akatsu, on the other hand, is going through the same questioning as he heads home. He knows that Amain is an angel, a mortal enemy, but still he couldn't help getting close to her. Also with his hand on his chest, he feels that he still hasn't been able to calm down since he left Lily Amain's building. Thus, both put their hands on their conscience and realize the obvious. They are in love with each other. The next day, the two head back to school and Lily is exhausted from not being able to sleep last night because of what happened between her and Akatsu. So she tries to focus on her studies to stay awake, but ends up dozing off. Suddenly, she realizes she's fallen into some strange dream, while Akatsu is going through the same struggle, fighting to stay awake. He glances at Lily and sees that she's already lost the battle against sleep, and there she is, complaining that she couldn't sleep in class because she's always been an exemplary student, until Akatsu appears in the dream offering to help with whatever she needs. At first, she's taken aback by finding passion within the dream itself, and upon closer inspection, she realizes she's dreaming of a dating simulator, where Akatsu is one of the characters she must encounter. Above all, she wants to wake up, but feels she can only do so after getting past this part with Akatsu in the game. At this point, the game glitches and even the language becomes indecipherable, so Lily chooses any option just to advance the plot somehow. With her choice, Akatsu asserts that he'll show all this power to Lily, and tells him to shut up as she doesn't know how to react. Meanwhile, the demon notices it's not very common to see a man sleeping, so he wonders what her face must look like while sleeping. 
He notices it and sees the look of despair on her face, so he decides to pretend he didn't see any of it. Back in the Angel's dream, Lily has progressed through some stages, but still hasn't gotten past Akatsu in the game. For this reason, she tries to figure out what she should do to end this quickly. And at this point, the idea of a meeting between the two comes to her mind as a final stage, but despite liking the idea, she forces herself to abandon it to convince herself that this is all just a stupid romance simulation within a dream. This stress makes the girl tremble in the classroom, which makes Akatsu wonder if he should wake her up, but then Lily calms down and seems happy in the dream, so the demon gives up the idea. It seems Lily is content because she's finally on a date, although she's very embarrassed in practice. She doesn't understand why she feels this way since it's just a demon beside her, and if there's something that doesn't make her anxious, it's a being like him. But her heart keeps beating faster, so for a moment, she sets aside her shyness and gathers the courage to look at the boy, who reciprocates by touching her face and confessing that he's in love, so he asks Lily to close her eyes. The angel goes crazy because a demon is before her asking for such a thing, and immediately the option to close her eyes or not appears in front of her. At first she heads for the button not to close her eyes, but she can't press it because she knows she would love to know what will happen if she actually closes her eyes. However, before she could decide what to do, the powerful waste samurai appears and strikes a mortal blow with his katana on Akatsu's shoulder, causing him to fall hard to the ground. Lily despairs and tries to help her friend, who regrets having messed up by eating too much and widening his waist, provoking the anger of the waste samurai, but facing his end, he tries to console the young Lily Amain, telling her not to be sad, as he will depart satisfied for finally having felt the sweet taste of passion. Therefore, he would love to kick the bucket witnessing a beautiful and genuine smile from his beloved. However, the wound was so severe that it finally took away the demon's life before the angel could fulfill her wish. At that moment, Akatsu and Yuko wake the girl, imagining she was having a very heavy nightmare and it seems the situation was so bad that Lily herself ended up in the infirmary, perhaps just to get a decent nap. However, she can't even sleep again because she's been so restless lately, and as much as she thought she had great self-control, she can't avoid this situation. Moreover, at that moment, Akatsu announces that he's going to enter Lily's room through the curtain, and on the spur of the moment, the girl decides to pretend to be asleep so she doesn't have to look at him. Meanwhile, she tries to figure out the reason he's showing up there, and concludes that he's just taking advantage of the situation to fill her heart with some cheap words of comfort. She plans not to allow it and asserts that she'll still turn the tables, but scenes of the two together fill her head, causing the angel to lose her composure. Therefore, a man loses control and shouts at the boy, asking what he wants with her. After all, not quite understanding why a man is reacting like this, Akatsu is happy that the girl showed up and says she could have told him she was awake, while unbuttoning the first button of his shirt, revealing a part of his body that leaves the girl even more lost, so instantly she hides her face again and assumes that Akatsu is planning to attack her, while she slept and make her wear those strange clothes that appear on TV, and not to let it go, she wraps the poor boy's body with several chains and makes him twirl as punishment. However, Akatsu explains that his only intention was to wait for the girl to wake up from the outside. Lily argues that the boy was unbuttoning his shirt while doing so, but he explains that he just wanted help taking off the collar from his neck. With that, the angel doesn't know where to put her face, but later she explains that she won't take off the collar in any way. Then, Akatsu responds that he has a great reason for the girl to remove his collar, since he plans to go to a super hot public bath. Therefore, he asks Lily to at least change the color of the mark to something less flashy or else he won't have the courage to enter the pool. Because of Akatsu's reason for wanting the end of his collar, Lily asks if he shouldn't be looking for an evil leader instead of worrying about public pools, so he confesses that he never got along well in hell, and that he's discovering a real life alongside the people he met in this world. Following this ideal, he wants to make the most of this place full of brightness, unlike the darkness of hell. Finally, he presumes that the angel wouldn't understand his side, since she spent her whole life in heaven. But the girl doesn't respond, and Akatsu realizes he opened his mouth too much, venting more than he should have, which probably will give Amain a chance to make fun of him. However, she simply responds in a simple and sincere way, understanding the demon's reasons. Then she agrees to help the boy with the collar thing. So she begins her procedure to end his suffering, but something starts to go very wrong. Suddenly, some unknown being materializes in front of Lily, conjuring a giant axe. Knowing what would happen, Lily runs and tells Akatsu to flee, and just when he would be hit, the demon manages to dodge and question what's happening. Lily explains that this is an anti-demon avatar she attached to the collar in case Akatsu betrayed her. However, for some reason, this avatar is also attacking its own master. Lily assumes that the avatar spent too much time inside a demon, causing it to malfunction and randomly attack everyone. 
In the meantime, Professor Shiromura enters the room to see who is causing this commotion, and Sue the Avatar attacks the man. Akatsu and Amain manage to avoid it, and the angel tells the demon to take the professor away while she holds the enemy. Shiromura laments that he won't withstand the injuries and Akatsu reminds him that he didn't get hurt anywhere. However, the professor claims he was thrown by the explosion of the mysterious woman and Akatsu must evacuate everyone inside the school. Then he loses consciousness due to the pain. Impatiently, Lily drags Shiromura away and tells Akatsu to escape to the courtyard, with her before the Avatar breaks the chains. Downstairs, the angel will set up a barrier to isolate them from the rest of the school and prevent anyone else from being in danger. Soon, the Avatar descends to find the two targets again, and the angel sets up the ring in the courtyard with her magical shield, joining forces with the demon to face the enemy. Amain tries to restrain the Avatar, but it has surreal strength, and the chains are not enough to hold it. Suspicious of this extraordinary power, the girl takes a closer look around the Avatar and notices a mark on its back. Akatsu is puzzled by the lack of reaction from his companion, so he tries to deal with the opponent to prevent him from reaching a main. However, the mysterious woman isolates the demon with a kick. Then she goes after Lily, who is defenseless in front of her. The Avatar tries to hit her with its axe, but Akatsu stops it with his own hand and pushes the enemy away. Next, he tells Lily to compose herself since her intention is to do good for heaven, while his is to favor hell, and that won't happen on its own. Having said that, Amain acknowledges that she let her emotions get the better of her, almost leading to a fatal mistake. For this reason, she needs to get her head back in the game and return to the fight. In the end, she finds it curious to be reminded of this by a demon. So she comes to her senses and tells Akatsu that she has a plan. Apparently, the avatar is being controlled by someone else because of the mark on its back. Therefore, Lily conveys her idea to the demon, who, without revealing the strategy, moves forward toward the enemy. Soon, he delivers a devastating punch to the ground, creating a dust cloud that prevents the woman from seeing where she's being attacked. He tries to attack from her blind spot, but the Avatar has an impressive reaction speed and manages to hit Akatsu in the shoulder with its axe. However, all of this was part of Akatsu's plan. He used a clone as bait to gain time to hold the Avatar. With this opportunity, the Angel has a chance to appear from above and try to nullify the control spell on the Avatar. However, snakes emerge from the mark and seek the girl's hand. Still, Lily pulls the tail, holding all the snakes so hard that she ends up breaking it, making the Avatar disappear once and for all. With the danger over, Akatsu regrets being so exhausted even though he didn't do anything too complex. Hearing that, Lily admits that he is still being restrained by her, and that's why he couldn't unleash his true strength against the enemy. Akatsu is angered by this revelation and asks if she's going to put that axe thing inside him again. Lily explains that she absorbed the Avatar into herself, and at that moment, she faints. About the Invocator's strength, the Angel's magical barrier begins to crumble, and Akatsu needs to get out of there quickly with the girl. Meanwhile, a woman is impressed that her snakes were defeated and asks if that Angel has always been this powerful. As a result, she instructs her brother to take care of the target, even if she may not get permission for it. Akatsu has been standing still for too long watching Lily rest, so he soon realizes that this may seem strange and covers the girl appropriately in bed. Then he reflects on the hellish day he had, where his simple desire to swim in the pool triggered a series of crazy events. Speaking of which, he didn't solve the problem of the mark on his neck, but it seems he'll have to leave that for tomorrow. Therefore, he heads out of the room where Amain is sleeping. However, the girl grabs the guy's pants with one hand and asks him not to leave. The girl's hands trembled as she held the demon and recalling the fight against the Avatar. He observes that Lily was acting strangely at that moment as if she were emotional or had a bad feeling. And even though he's not too keen on helping the angel, he has no choice at the moment since he still has the collar around his neck, and this accessory still signifies that she has control over him. Speaking of the collar, Lily didn't even bother to change the color of that thing. As for the Avatar, he remembers when Amain said that it was being controlled by someone and so Akatsu presumes that maybe there was some trouble in heaven, but it's not his concern as the demon already has his share of worries with hell. Although he could have left the girl alone against the Avatar and lived up to his nature, he definitely wouldn't be cool to see Lily in trouble in front of him. And as he's having this thought, Akatsu starts to worry about acting like those nice guys who do everything for others, including worrying about girls' feelings. Suddenly, a more gallant version of Akatsu appears in the room, responding that he has indeed become exactly what he's imagining. At least with Lily Amain, after all, he's hopelessly in love with this angel. But he doesn't need to worry because the girl is definitely into him too, especially since she held onto the stallion's pants to keep his masculine presence in this difficult moment. With little confidence in this, the original Akatsu assumes that all of this happened because she was scared of the incident, but the copy ridicules the fact that the young man understands nothing about women's hearts. In a moment like this, she would definitely just want to feel the presence of a specific person. 
and that person is himself, Masatoru Akatsu. In other words, she clearly likes you, there's no escaping it. With that, the original Akatsu's realization hits him once again, as if the first time wasn't enough, and he points to the bed, shouting if someone who really likes him is lying there after all. Speaking of it, the blankets move, and the two stand still, eagerly waiting to see the angelic face of their beloved Lily again. Until, in fact, it's Professor Shiromura who emerges, pulling the boy under the covers. Some time later, Lily wakes up and realizes she passed out without even taking off her uniform. Going to wash her face, she wonders how she ended up in her own room until she sees Akutsu crying during a nightmare. She becomes even more confused because she doesn't remember everything that happened until she remembers pulling the boy back when she was still asleep, and for things like that, she hates being a sleepwalker. But now there's no way around it. She has to erase his memories, so she approaches the victim to make him forget everything and then some. However, seeing the cut on the demon's hand, she reflects that he endured that to try to save a main, and this makes her reconsider. So while bandaging Akatsu's hand, she wonders why he helped her, given that they are enemies and he could have easily abandoned the angel in battle. Perhaps deep down it's because he feels something for her, but that idea disturbs the girl and she quickly becomes embarrassed and tries to dismiss that hypothesis. At this moment, she accidentally thanks the boy for his help but quickly loses her composure, telling herself that he shouldn't ask for anything more because she has already thanked him, and that in itself is enough. However, she also remembers the day she promised to give him a hug for every job well done. Even though it was just a joke, sometimes he took it seriously, and you might get hurt if he doesn't receive this reward, especially because this help now is worth 10,000 jobs well done. Meanwhile, Akatsu remains in his nightmare realizing how heavy his teacher is. Therefore, she prepares to give the demon a hug, but at the last moment she realizes what she's doing and abandons the idea, saying that the guy there can forget it because she won't do it. However, she knows very well that she herself brought up the subject, and for this reason, Lily begins to have an identity crisis not knowing how to act in this situation. She knows that her pride won't allow her to back down, but part of her would love for her to have the courage to go ahead. It was then that Lily had the best idea that anyone could have at that moment, which is to pretend that none of that happened. However, desire speaks louder, and the next moment, she changes her mind as the hub will only be this time according to herself. Therefore, the angel approaches once again to reward her servant, but Akatsu is still fast asleep, meaning it's not appropriate for her to be rubbing against him without the boy being awake. On the other hand, when awake, the demon becomes even more annoying, so this may be the chance to do it without stressing herself out. In the end, it seems that everything is going to be hell for her, whether she hugs Akatsu or doesn't hug him. Meanwhile, Akatsu is dreaming about Professor Shiromura who is explaining to him, as if it were a regular lesson, that to understand a woman, you need to think like one. To start with the basics, he pretends to be a girl asking the guy to take the first step soon, while instructing Akatsu to repeat the performance. The demon softens his voice and tries to do well, but the professor tells him to put more feeling into the performance, a truly feminine touch to be more convincing. With that, he ends up letting slip some words, telling Lily to hurry while still asleep. The girl is startled and questions if the boy is already awake and seducing her inappropriately by pretending to be asleep, then she quickly shouts that he was almost there before this ridiculous act of his. Then she starts analyzing where she could give that hug to Akutsu, and concludes that the perfect place would be fitting between his legs. With this plan in mind, she sits facing away from the young man, while her head fries like a potato in oil, and all she wishes is that the guy doesn't wake up while she's doing that. Having said that, even without touching the boy, Lily thinks it's enough, and she prepares to leave his legs. But before that, Akatsu ends up falling forward and hubbing a mane from behind. This triggers the emergency signal in the angel and Akatsu mumbles that it seems like he's humming a feather, and that the smell is delicious. With a touch, she senses that he's trembling and understands the reason, considering that the demon almost lost his life in that clash with the Avatar, and such a traumatic moment could cause some serious nightmares. What she didn't know is that simply staying in this position with another person could be so comforting. And thinking now with her guard down, Lily remembers that she didn't get a chance to change Akatsu's collar color, so she gets up to finally do that. Therefore, she raises her index finger and dims the dark color of the mark almost to the point of erasing it, realizing that, in the end, Akatsu's reward for the excellent work turned out to be the best possible. Then, she turns to the door and notices that Akatsu broke the glass to unlock the latch and left a note apologizing for it, but explaining that he doesn't have the money to fix it. This infuriates the angel, warning that this will definitely go into the account of this demon. Speaking of which, she begins to wonder how the demon got her inside the house after all that confusion. First, she imagines Akatsu dragging her on the floor and then stuffing her into a suitcase, but none of it seems to make sense. 
In other words, the only possibility would be him carrying her in his arms, and the girl tries her best to rid herself of that thought because that is the last thing an angel would need from an enemy evil entity. As soon as it dawns, Akatsu finally wakes up tied up in a pink blanket and the chains he knows all too well. Immediately, he knew this could only be a man's doing, who was sleeping like an angel, as if nothing had happened. So he breaks free from his bonds and decides it's time to go home after all this saga. Before opening the door now, he looks at his bandaged hand then at the girl as she sleeps and finally turns the knob to leave. As soon as he closes the door, the noise wakes Lily who looks around and sees that the demon is no longer there with her. So she goes to see what happened, but there's a Katsu apologizing for waking Lily up and asking how she is. She replies that she doesn't need a demon worrying about her and since she's already acting normally, Akatsu assumes that the girl is really fine again, making Lily fume that the boy is still in her house. But at that moment, she looks at the table and sees two prepared dishes. To justify, Akatsu says he was hungry, so he took some things from Lily's fridge and cooked a recipe. Then she asks why he made a dish for her too, and he replies that it's just a way of thanking her for the bandage she put on his hand. Still maintaining her tough stance, Lily replies that it was just her obligation since she's Akatsu's owner, but the boy is not irritated by the provocation. On the contrary, he remains calm. After that, the two sit at the table, and despite his effort, Akatsu comments that this probably won't be better than the Italian pasta Lily made. Embarrassed, she replies that you never know and gets ready to test the classmate's culinary skills. Before the first forkful, she sees Akatsu struggling to hold the utensil because of his bandage but decides to ignore it and start eating. Akatsu mentions that Lily had a lot of bell peppers at home, one of the boy's favorite foods, and Lily explains that she just grabbed a bunch because it was on sale, so he wouldn't think she bought it just because of him. Still, he asks why she took so much, even if it was cheap, since she hates him. But Amain says she never said that and tells the boy to eat already. As they leave together, they observe the bright morning sun, and Lily thinks about how Akatsu looks radiant. Then he bids farewell to his friend but goes in the opposite direction of the school. When Lily questions if he doesn't happen to know the way to school, Akatsu replies that he decided to skip the first period. Lily asks if he thinks it's right, but the demon doesn't like the way she's talking, especially after saving her skin. Faced with that, Lily's pride takes over and she mocks the boy, thanking him sarcastically for the help but emphasizing that if she had gone from this world, Akatsu's collar would explode anyway. Akatsu loses it with this information, thinking about how much he's being dominated by this short girl, but immediately she warns that she was just messing with him. The demon gets even more frustrated and rants that you don't joke about something like that, but Lily has no shame, so she just responds that the devil is scared. Then she lowers her guard a bit, revealing that she changed the collar color as he had asked. The young man explodes with joy because he could finally splash around in the city's pools, so he shakes the girl's arms while inviting her to jump into the pool with him. On the other hand, Amain tells him to stop clowning around in the middle of the street, and at that moment, Yuka and Hirota pass by the two, seeing the scene with dropped jaws. The next day, Amain finds herself at a loss because apparently the entire class found out about her and Akatsu leaving the condominium together. That day, after Yuka and Hirota witnessed the scene, Lily tried to explain what was happening to them. But the two had already disappeared without a trace. So there was nothing left to do but move forward and pretend like nothing was happening hoping nobody would care so much about this gossip. However, Lily opened the classroom door and saw those frighteningly bright eyes, thirsty for others' love lives. Faced with the situation, the angel acknowledges that they outnumbered her, but she's aware that they are still only human. In her mind, her angelic aura would make her classmates leave her alone, but as soon as she sits in her chair, the girl is mercilessly attacked by all the students, and she only managed to get out of there using practically all the energy in her body. Seeing her friend's distress, Akatsu questions who spread this story everywhere and Lily is sure Hiroto was the main gossip because the shock he had at seeing a main and Akatsu together left the poor guy zombified to the point where he could only repeat without pause that the two lovebirds are having an affair like a brainless idiot. Because of the seriousness of this rumor, the angel is desperate to do something about it, but Akatsu, personally, isn't as affected as the girl. He thinks he won't interfere with anything regarding his work in the world of humans, but upon realizing that other girls would stop paying attention to him if they thought he was taken, Akatsu changes his mind and extends his hand to put an end to this story with Lily. However, the kid was trembling like a leaf, so much so that the girl herself had to ask about the sudden Parkinson's, and no matter how much he argued he was fine on the roller coaster, Akatsu was terrified of losing the casual affection of the other suitors, so he makes the deal with the angel. Still, they had no choice. The angel and the demon would have to work together once again to fight evil, so Amain returns once again to the den of snakes and waits until she is surrounded by the enemy horde, including their leader and witness of the case, Yuka Tanahashi. However, before making her rehearsed speech, 
The angel's cell phone vibrates, and she asks for permission from the crowd, saying she needs to step out to buy something to drink. Watching closely, Yuka believes it's a strategic retreat, but Lilia Mayne was plotting something more combative at that moment because it was actually a strategic confrontation. As the girl opened the door to leave, Akatsu appears as if by mistake, and the two exchange awkward small talk, asking each other if everything's okay and such, until Lily leaves and the rest of the class, who were watching the conversation, soon announced that this little play didn't fool anyone. However, Koi Matsu enters the scene, an anime expert, ready to give her verdict on the interaction after metaphorizing the supposed couple. As she was seen as an authority on the subject, all the girls believed when Koyamatsu argued that the conversation between a main and a kutsu wasn't fake, considering that both were respecting each other's social space, providing a mutual distance of safety. This insight could never have been premeditated because if it were a hoax, the two would have acted much stranger, either sticking close to each other or being too distant during the dialogue. Therefore, the specialist believes that they probably aren't in a serious relationship, However, she doesn't rule out the possibility, so she recommends that everyone present continue to be vigilant and observe the behavior of the two every step. Paying attention to every word, Akatsu recognizes Lily's extreme level of skill in convincing the crowd with this performance, and this kind of trickery convinced the boy that angels can indeed be quite demonic creatures. However, not everything was smooth sailing and Yuka dares to question the truthfulness of the story told by Amain to justify the case, where she claimed that Akatsu got lost in her condominium after entering because he wanted to see what it was like inside. Once there, the young man was surrounded by enemies and had to fight for his life while desperately fleeing, but during his escape, Akatsu fell into a trap and got stuck on a rock along the way. Amain, who happened to live in this condominium, saved her classmate from the ambush, and that's why they were seen leaving together from there. However, a few skeptics were questioning who gets stuck under a rock nowadays and sensing the disbelief growing among the gossipers, Akatsu acts quickly and shakes his coat out the window, exuding testosterone, suchi colon, and marble fragments, enchanted by the scent of the charmer, the curious ones surrender and believe that everything was just a misunderstanding after all, there's marble on the man's coat and marble only comes from a stone. Right at that moment, Tanigawa and Hirota arrive at their friend and invite him to have lunch together. With everyone gathered, Yuka comments that she was afraid Hirota would turn into Professor Shiramura, losing so much hair in his zombified state, but she's glad he has regained his lucidity. In the midst of this, Lily is angry about all the times Yuka was too faced with her, so with every word her supposed friend gives, the angel tries to analyze if the sincere idea she's giving or just another episode of cynicism. And speaking of which, the girl apologizes to Amain for earlier, as she couldn't control her selfish curiosity and ended up inciting a bunch of idle people to invade her dear friend's privacy. But as compensation for the slip-up, Yuka puts a cherry tomato in her best friend's mouth, only to then ask if Akatsu is jealous of her airplane landing on Amain's runway. So it's obvious to Lily that this was the girl's plan which makes her raise her guard again, but she hopes Akatsu has also figured it out by now and doesn't give in to the bad intention. However, Yuka had a surprise attack up her sleeve and right after, she also offers to put a cherry tomato in Akatsu's mouth, leaving a main in check. At that moment, we see that Yuka had met with the Anim Master moments before this encounter, who, consulting her vast cerebral database, supposes that jealousy is the Achilles heel to uncover the truth between those two. So Yuka puts her plan into action, making Hirota insanely jealous in the process, killing two birds with one stone. However, while Lily was holding back from exploding, Akatsu casually ate the tomato, leaving Yuka frustrated. She turns to Amain, thinking she must have angered the girl to the extreme, but the angel forces her classic sweet smile to dispel the anger. Soon, Yuka tries to analyze the table after her moves and concludes that Lily and Akatsu probably don't have anything serious, as the boy ate the tomato without a second thought, and during lunch, they didn't exchange glances or anything. Still, there's something very strange about Lily's reaction to the tomato in her friend's mouth, so Yuka gears up for the million-dollar question, asking if Akatsu is free later. To throw off suspicions, the guy accepts the invitation to go out and finds himself in an unbearable date with that girl. He assumes she wouldn't invite him out for no reason, without another motive behind it. Seeing the guy might be getting the wrong idea, Yuka tries to grab his attention all the time, saying she just wants to talk with the young man. Looking at Yuko's heart, Akatsu realizes he could build a great friendship with that girl. However, not everyone is thrilled about this, and while spying on the date, Lily tries to convince herself that she's just on a mission to see if Akatsu won't spill the beans to Yuka. On her side, Hirota and Tanigawa think they're on a date with Amain, but she's just using them to avoid looking like a crazy loner spying around. While Hirota is ecstatic to be on a fake date with his ultimate crush, Tanigawa comments that she didn't know Yuko had eyes for someone other than Hirota, let alone imagining that Akatsu would enjoy a random date like this. 
Watching the interaction between the two, Lily has to admit that it really seems like something more, and that makes her freak out every moment, whether it's them having ice cream or watching a movie during the date. After witnessing so many painful scenes like these, Lily takes a hit and finally shows she's shaken, not even wanting to look at that date anymore. Seeing this, Tanagawa suggests that she be more honest with her feelings just like Hirota should be. The two play the fool as always, so Tanagawa leaves because she has better things to do. Lily tries to talk to Hirota about what they just heard, but Hirota fakes a stomach ache and disappears right away. Completely alone, Lily has room to reflect on Tanagawa's words and the pain in her chest. After what happened at her house with Akutsu, she had convinced herself that her feelings for the guy were just an illusion, but a nagging feeling continues to bother the angel until today, and that could be the reason for Tanagawa's advice because sometimes Lily is making it obvious that she's jealous and just doesn't admit it to herself. At that moment, the new couple approaches in search of a place to sit, and Lily jumps into the bush behind the bench to avoid being seen, falling into the cold water. Listening to the conversation between the two, she panics when Yuka asks Akutsu if the thing with Lily is real or not, as one day the guy commented that he found a mane really cute. In turn, Akutsu remembers that he did say that, and this news makes the angel almost involuntarily open a smile, while she scolds herself for not liking any declaration. Then Yuka goes further, wanting to know what Akutsu finds attractive about Lily. Inside, the demon knows it's about his disguise as the enemy, but still wouldn't mind praising a main in public, as his human disguise appreciates it and Akutsu acts like a normal teenager. So he mentions that Lily is a strong, determined girl who goes after what she wants without giving up and she is kind. Yuka finds the kindness thing quite obvious, but the talk about going after goals is profound and only a love-struck guy could have such a thought. Having said that, Akutsu gets excited and tries to convince Yuka that it's nothing special, while a main tries to cool down from the combustion she just suffered from the compliments. Finally, Yuka asks if Akutsu has ever thought of dating Lily, and this question makes the guy pause for a long time and a main dies a little with every second of silence that passes. Then, he finally declares that it's a complicated situation, but he has some important things to take care of, and he imagines that there's no chance of anything more serious between them. Lily swallows that answer dry as Akutsu is aware that, with or without feelings involved, they are natural enemies and his mission in that world includes overcoming that angel. In the meantime, a noise in the water makes Akutsu and Yuka think it was some fish, and right after that, Hirota appears with two sodas in hand. At that moment, Yuka wants to know who the second soda is for, and the boy trembles before accidentally letting it slip that it's for Lily. With this slip-up, Yuka pounces on the guy, and after taming her dog again, she decides to go home with him and says goodbye to Akutsu, who felt a pang knowing that Lily was also having a date. On the way back, Yuka shows that she's not as in control as she seems, and when she asks Hirota how the date with Lily went, she looks visibly hurt and vulnerable. Late at night, Lily takes a long hot bath but still feels cold. She tries to sleep to forget everything she experienced today, but Akutsu's declaration doesn't leave her mind. Still, before passing out, she acknowledges that, indeed, two enemies can't be together. During her sleep, the angel is restless and uncomfortable and when pink chains emerge from an angelic portal, a figure appears in the shadows of Maine's room. When dawn breaks, her classmates comment that the girl caught a cold and won't be coming to class today. Sleepily, Akutsu thinks to himself that he didn't know angels could get sick. Suddenly, a girl passes behind him and takes Lily's seat. When the demon sees who it is, he jumps out of the chair like a startled cat, and his friends ask if he knows her. Akutsu only knows her as the girl with a nice body, so he figures it's best not to comment on that. However, she spares him the trouble by introducing herself as Lilia Main, Lily's older sister, thanking the class for the great treatment they've been giving her sister. The boys in the class are drooling over her like dogs with a skewer of chicken, and Akutsu is surprised that the woman can talk, considering she stayed silent throughout their encounter. Lilia mentions a rule at home about replacing her sister when she can't go to school and no one around has any idea why that rule exists. However, Lilia gets the chance to explain the whole story to the teacher, and as soon as he enters the classroom, Tanagawa interrupts and introduces her as Lilia Main's sister, expressing her desire to participate in the class since her sister couldn't come. Shiromira responds that it's not allowed in school and asks the girl to leave, but she insists so many times looking directly at the teacher's face that he quickly remembers their brief encounter that day and therefore decides to give in to her wish, causing a burst of joy among the boys in the class. Once she gets what she wants, Lily approaches Akutsu and thanks him for helping her sister, mentioning that Lily talks a lot about him. In fact, she mentions it in a strange way, saying she was only able to come because Lily got sick, and with her threatening eyes, Lily asks him to keep things calm between him and her sister. 
As the class begins, Akatsu understands less and less why Amain's sister decided to show up in her place, considering maybe Lily sent Lilia to keep an eye on him in her absence. During this reflection, the girl is trembling like a jackhammer trying to put the lead in her mechanical pencil, and Akatsu finds it amusing that her tongue is sticking out. However, a huge lead flies past him, grazing his face and the strange girl pretends it was an accident, but Akatsu knows she did it on purpose. During physical education class, Akatsu's friends can't stop admiring the sweaty girl's body, and the demon wonders if they would still adore her like this if they knew she tried to kill him. At that moment, Akatsu feels a desire to kill just like an angel feels when they see a demon. His body assumes a defensive posture instinctively, like a demon enduring constant repression from angelic beings. However, not even his well-constructed defense could prevent him from being knocked out by a ball thrown by Lilia. Later, Akatsu is waiting exactly where she asked him to meet her, and the demon wants her to finish him off once and for all, if that's her wish. However, when the girl finally arrives, she apologizes for the day she attacked him and Lily, saying she was unconscious that day, and that doesn't change what she did, but she deeply regrets her actions. Akatsu believes she was being manipulated and couldn't control her actions, so it wasn't her fault. Still, Lilia apologizes and awkwardly, Akatsu forgives her. She comments to Akatsu that he's a very strange demon, but he thinks the same of her, for apologizing to a declared enemy, and that seems like the kind of oddity Lily would have. With that, her sister explains that once they're embedded in their masters, angels are influenced by their souls, be it through appearance, personality, judgment, or behavior. In some cases, masters don't even allow their subordinates to have their own consciousness. For this reason, Lilia is trying to take advantage of her time outside of Lily's body, since inside she's unable to reproduce feelings, and also because Lily seems very different since she arrived at this school. Despite feeling deep sadness in this place, Lily has also experienced intense joys, and this feeling made Lilia excited about the chance to maybe experience the same thing in this world. Facing her confession, Akatsu almost softens his heart, but before that, he remembers that nothing she said justifies the pencil lead she threw at him. Raising her voice in the same way, Lilia makes it clear that those things were her revenge against Akatsu because it was precisely something he said that made her sister sick. She insists that he think about what could have been that speech, but he really seemed to have no idea, so she explains that even though she knows Lily is attracted to him, Akatsu had the nerve to flirt with another girl in front of her. Speaking of the devil, Yuka appears at that moment, saying Herodas said they would be there, so she asked them a small favor. Accompanying Yuka to where she wanted, Akatsu wishes more than anything that he hadn't been invited, and when his classmate rings the intercom, Lily appears surprised by the visit of her friends while Lilia tries to sneak away. Akatsu grabs the angel by the arm and asks if there's any reason she doesn't want to see her little sister. Thinking about it, he guesses that the girl didn't tell Lily she was going to school in her place, and then he finds out he hit the nail on the head. In light of this, he invites Lilia to go to hell with him right at that moment. Arriving there, Lily welcomes everyone and informs them that fortunately the figure has dropped a bit, but when she sees her sister's face, she can't hide her sour reaction. Over time, she tried to disguise what she was feeling, but had to ask her friends if she caused any trouble. On the contrary, Yuka explains that the girl was a huge hit at school, so Lilia takes the opportunity to explain that she decided to come to school to get to know the place where her little sister spends her days, and that she would never do anything bad being the older sister. By the way, Yuka didn't know Lily had a sister because the girl never talks about her life, and that's why Lilia decides to tell Yuka details about her. With no social tact, the angel details her sister's exact weight and height and even reveals which part of her body she washes first in the shower. Faced with this blunder, Lily doesn't want to know where this could lead and tries to distract her sister, asking her to buy a cleaning product that's missing. Feeling awkward, the eldest reluctantly agrees, and as she exits, Lily tries to ease the tension by fetching tea for her friends. In the kitchen, she wonders if it would have been better to keep her sister unconscious, while Yuka questions whether she should leave her alone, considering she's unwell. Therefore, the demon decides to take a look at the girl to see how she's doing. Staggering in the kitchen, Lily is thinking of sending the others away after serving the tea, because she really needs to lie down. However, she's worse than she imagined and ends up falling backward, so Akatsu realizes that checking on the situation was a wise choice. After preventing the girl from falling, he feels her fever with his hand. But as soon as he remembers Akatsu's harsh words in the square, she slaps his hand and tells him to stick to Yuka until she returns. Speaking of which, Lily can't resist and cynically asks how their meeting went, realizing she's overflowing with negative feelings to the point of not being able to control them. With no order to escape, Akatsu admits it was somewhat fun, so Amain loses her temper and tries to forcefully remove the boy from the kitchen. But the intensity of her emotions causes her body to combust and she faints. Sometime later, she wakes up being watched by Yuka. 
Her friend tells her that Akatsu carried her to bed and finally bids farewell to Lily because she has some matters to attend to, so she'll be alone with Akutsu until her sister returns. Before leaving the room, Yuka comments on how kind this guy is and Lily agrees with her, albeit unintentionally. Ready to leave, Yuka asks her colleague not to do anything strange while she's away and warns him to be careful when gambling, on never. Alone, Katsu can't stop thinking about what Lily said to him earlier and tries to figure out why Amain is so upset. Connecting the dots, he considers that perhaps she was somehow following his meeting with Yuka, and at some point, she overheard him affirming that nothing serious would happen with her. At that moment, he hears a loud noise coming from Amain's room, and instantly, he remembers the elder sister's eerie eyes, saying how regrettable it would be if anything happened to her little sister. So he decides to see what's going on, and the girl is having a nightmare in bed. He wonders if he should wake her up, but she wakes up on her own and accidentally holds the demon's hand. She tells him she was having a bad dream and sleepily Lily tries to collect her thoughts until Akatsu asks her to let go of his sleeve. Embarrassed, Amain asks him to leave since her fever has subsided, so Akatsu tries to check her temperature with his own hand, making the girl even more flustered. Hearing a curse of damn amidst all the things she said, Akatsu realizes she really improved, so he announces he'll stay in the living room in case she needs anything. This time, the angel lowers her guard a bit in the face of the boy's kindness, who then reveals that her sister apologized for the attack that day. Furthermore, he comments on how much the two sisters resemble each other because of all that determination, so Amain takes the opportunity to boost her own ego, saying that her influence on her sister's life made her beautiful both inside and out. Akatsu tries not to agree too emphatically to avoid making the girl even more arrogant, so he tries to be more restrained, but Lily demands he show more enthusiasm in response to the self-praise she made. However, spontaneously, Akatsu responds that if all angels were like the Amain sisters, maybe there wouldn't need to be a war between heaven and hell. Despite this, he asks if that opinion was stupid, and even though she doesn't think so, Lily pretends it is and says that if all demons were like Akatsu, then Earth would be the second hell. The mischievous one threatens to shout, but then Lily sneezes, and he remembers she's still sick. Therefore, he finds it amusing and says the girl needs to be pampered until she gets better, instead of being scolded, so he decides to leave her alone for a quieter recovery, since, as Lily herself had said, he can go because she's better. However, before the boy leaves through the door, she explains that she only grabbed his sleeve because she was having a nightmare, and just in case, so she wouldn't have another bad dream, she would like him to hold her hand until she falls asleep. As Akatsu was taken aback, he reacted somewhat surprised to this request, so Lily uses the card the boy himself mentioned about her needing to be pampered. Afterwards, she calms down a bit and reaffirms her wish, making Akatsu realize she was really serious. By the way, it's very rare to see Lily Amain being so sincere about her feelings, so this is something he won't see often. Therefore, he decides to give his hand to the girl. But at that exact moment, Lily arrives from the street and sees the scene. She asks what's going on there, and the two try to avoid the subject, so the older sister comments that she's feeling a warm and bittersweet sensation in her chest, and she understands that it might be her feelings flowing inside. Despite this, she hadn't forgotten what she saw when she entered the room, so she insists on knowing what was going on, and Lily's reaction was to let out a scream that could be heard throughout the neighborhood. When night falls, Lily misses Akatsu's hand and fears that once again she'll have to deal with a terrible night of nightmares. Some time later, Amain was cured of her fever and ready to hunt more demons with Akatsu, but before that, she would like to have a snack and give a present to her subordinate demon as a reward for visiting her. So the two start discussing what they'll order to eat, and in the middle of it, a man interrupts the conversation and celebrates the fact that he finally found Lily. Upon noticing the man's presence, Lily recognizes him as her brother. Akatsu analyzes every inch of the stranger and is surprised that this handsome guy is the girl's older brother, but above all, he fears that this means he's another angel, and that's definitely not a good sign. And speaking of which, when the man asks who Akatsu is, the demon sweats cold, stammers, and can't even manage to speak, until Lily takes on that role and says the boy's name, explaining that he's a classmate friend, and that they bumped into each other on the way and started talking. With that said, the demon sighs in relief from being saved by the bell, and in front of his sister's friend, the man makes a point to introduce himself cordially as Zwei, and is extremely friendly in asking the boy to continue being a good friend to his little sister. Politely, he asks Lily for a loan for a little while because it's been a long time since they've seen each other and he would like to spend some family time with her. So they bid farewell and Lily lets out a strange glance backward as she leaves. After finding himself alone, Akatsu reflects that he became so tense that he ended up sounding submissive in front of Amain's brother, but at least he didn't reveal his true identity to the man which keeps him in the game he was assigned to play for the pride of his boss Liz. Despite this, Lily seemed uncomfortable throughout the conversation 
And after that look she gave when saying goodbye, Akatsu begins to think that maybe she's the type who's super attached to her brother, but doesn't have the courage to admit it in front of others. But that's okay, the guy really seemed nice according to the demon, so there shouldn't be any problem behind that. However, Zwei begins to show another side when alone with his sister because he isolates the two within a barrier that keeps all humans out of their reach, but allows seeing inside to witness the girl being humiliated as she kneels in front of him. First of all, he finds it amusing that his sister has found a new little friend and Lily senses the ill intention in the angel's speech, so she argues that Kutsu is just a classmate, nothing more, and then asks why her brother came there. Without giving an answer, Zwei nearly hits his sister's face with his saber because she raised her head without permission, and she apologizes, being submissive to him in a way never seen before. After that, he allows her to raise her head to facilitate the conversation, and reveals that he's there in place of their older sister to find out how Lily defeated the Avatar without the older sister's blessing. So, remembering scenes from that fight where she ambushed the opponent to climb on her back and steal back her Avatar by breaking the snakes of the mark, the girl explains that she summoned the Avatar out of curiosity, and when it attacked, Lily fought for her life desperately, finally disabling the Avatar and removing the blessing. However, she shows that she didn't emerge unscathed from this duel, as she shows her injured wrist after the confrontation. Sui questions if the injury is really recent, and trembling with fear, Lily confirms it, so her brother is convinced without further questions. Soon he moves on to another subject, about the mission of the girl to eliminate demons on Earth. He observes that the girl has only eliminated beast-type demons, and therefore, she's surely letting some humanoid ones slip through unnoticed. So Zwei questions if this is laziness on the part of his sister, or if she's plotting something with this. Lily ponders that humanoids have their own minds, unlike beasts, and that complicates her work a lot, and given this justification, Zwei presumes that the girl must not be capable of much beyond that, evidently. But he was worried, along with her other sister, that Lily might be planning something against them, because of the resentment she feels for everything she has been through at their hands. Trembling with anger, Lily hides her feelings to reply that she would never think of such a thing after all, she's happy to have received a mission, just like the other angels. Whether sincerely or not, Sway accepts the answers with a certain cynicism, and says that he needs to prepare a report for later, and asks the girl to keep her focus on the work above all. However, he has one last question before leaving, which leaves Lily a main in check once again. Considering that Lily tried to summon her avatar and lost control, Sway remembers well that their other sister left the avatar as a trap, as she loves to play a prank from time to time, and this time she left that Avatar as a trap, because the only condition to activate it was having a demon nearby. With that, he knocks Lily down and laments the crime she committed, but reminds her not to underestimate him. Then he asks who this demon really is, and depending on the answer, she knows very well what will happen. However, Lily is so scared that she can't utter a single word, and inside her head, she asks for Akatsu's help as she feels suffocated under so much pressure. Meanwhile, the demon ends up finding the Amain siblings by chance while having twisted ideas about jumping from the balcony. He's amazed to see Lily immobilized like that for the first time and assumes that that guy must be quite strong after all. But despite seeing his friend in that desperate situation, he turns his back and makes a phone call to his boss. Akatsu is tired of the cruelty and brutality that these angels have been showing day after day, and he had forgotten about their character after spending so much time with Lily. Still, the devil reflects that this is her nature, so maybe it's not fair to expect her to be much different from what she was destined to be. Then he informs Liz over the phone that he saw an angel, but he won't fight him alone, of course, and therefore he will flee as far away as possible. However, contrary to what he said, Akatsu loses his cool and storms into the square, apologizing to his boss for being discovered before hanging up the phone. So he isn't impressed by the entrance show and presumes that if the kid there were an ally, he surely wouldn't have minded giving a heads up before showing up in such a rude manner. In other words, Akatsu is definitely a demon, without wasting time as he attacks the young man, so I is certain of the enemy's breed upon seeing the diabolic marks spreading across his face, so he warns in advance that Lily will suffer punishment for lying, but before that, he has a demon to hunt. Akatsu wonders what he's going to do now to get the girl out of this mess since this guy is certainly a few levels above the both of them. But despite his effort, Lily herself binds her friend with her chains before telling the boy that he messed everything up by interfering in this fight, because if she had endured a little longer, maybe she could have gotten rid of it all. Akatsu replies that he couldn't stand seeing that scene without doing anything, but Lily cries as she remembers that now she will be judged, and furthermore, what she most wanted to avoid will happen, which was seeing her friend being exorcised. Still, the demon couldn't act any other way because his body acted on its own, even though we can't explain how. Faced with the weakness of the angel, the chains weaken around the demon. Therefore, he rises after the chains break and points out that if they just finish off the brother, everything will be fine. 
Lily warns that they won't be able to do that, and furthermore, Akatsu can only use half of his true power. Despite this, the demon rolls up his sleeves and takes responsibility for what is about to happen. Sway mocks the use courage but gives him an advantage just for entertainment. If Akatsu lands a single blow on Zwei, he'll pretend he didn't see anything that happened in the square. Akatsu doesn't like being underestimated, of course, but before any fitting response, Zwei had already moved in on the devil with his incredible speed, almost beheading him with the first blow. Akatsu dodges in time and tries to retaliate with a kick, but the angel defends himself effortlessly. As retaliation, Zui isolates the demon away with his weapon. And as Akatsu recovers from the fall, he realizes it would be important to get rid of that darn saber. So he advances again against the enemy. Zui warns that the enemy won't achieve anything just with willpower, but that didn't stop Akatsu from shattering the opponent's blade into pieces. Still, Zui doesn't lose his composure and finding humor in the youth's persistence, he summons a group called the Quartet to subdue the demon. The four avatars of the angel restrain Akutsu on the ground, which makes Zui think the enemy's limit has been reached, and indeed, the demon couldn't move in the face of the Quartet's action. Zui thinks that exercising Akutsu right now wouldn't be so cool, and his avatars obediently agree. Therefore, he calls Lily over and asks if she managed to make this diabolic creature her partner by seducing him. Embarrassed, Lily says no, and her brother sarcastically agrees because according to him, she would never be able to do that with that disgusting body of hers. Akatsu asks what's this story about a disgusting body and Zui thinks about telling this story as a final request to the condemned. This was the last thing Lily wanted, so she cries repeatedly and apologizes. But Zui has no mercy for the youngest so he tears parts of her stocking, leaving her exposed. The girl kneels ashamed and Akatsu questions Zui how he can consider himself the girl's brother acting like this. The angel tells the demon to shut up because he believes he's about to teach a valuable lesson to the demon, and then orders his sister to remove her hands from the stocking, or else he'll cut them off. After doing so, Zui tears the skin of her right thigh and reveals a crest wrapped around the entire body of the young angel. He finds it hilarious, but in turn, Akatsu only feels an increasing desire to beat the Amain's brother. Lastly, Zui asks how Akatsu dares to walk with Lily as if it were nothing, since the two are natural enemies and furthermore, she is an angel without wings. Akatsu doesn't understand what it means to be without wings, especially since he has seen his friend flying normally. However, Zui emphasizes that not everything is as it seems and orders his little sister to show the truth to the boy, while pointing the saber at him, in case she's not willing to cooperate. Lily doesn't want to see her friend hurt, so she projects herself and opens her beautiful and gigantic wings perfectly normal. The older angel bursts into laughter, and Akatsu asks the reason for all this drama. So Zui approaches the girl with his saber while recounting that wings have always been the symbol of power for angels. Akatsu tries to react to the humiliation his friend is about to suffer, but the quartet continues to make it clear that no level of effort will be enough for him to get out of there. Therefore, without resistance, Zui cuts off his sister's wings and points her out as a fraud. While Akatsu continues to try unsuccessfully to get out, the angel ridicules the simplicity of Lily's bird-like wings, only to then exhibit his own and feel egocentric pride in them. Absorbing all of that, Akatsu swallows the most deadly hatred he has ever felt, for seeing his friend blaspheme before his eyes, and so his demonic transformation gains more and more intensity. Stretching in the office, Akatsu's boss, Liz, feels that her room became very empty after the young man left for his mission on Earth, especially after meeting that peculiar girl who always accompanies him. Speaking of the devil, she wonders how he's faring on this journey, until he calls her and starts babbling nonsense, leaving the boss worried. After some effort, Akatsu spills out that he encountered an angel. Without a second thought, Liz tells him to back off and wait for the reinforcements that are on their way, and the young man responds that he wouldn't be foolish enough to face an angel without help. However, to make matters worse, he warns that he's been discovered and hangs up. Returning to the now, Sway was so confident in the demon's failure that he turned his back on him. But as he mocked Akatsu, the boy throws one of the angel's servants right beside him, shattering her like glass as she hits the wall with force. The other servants try to react, but Akatsu wields such overwhelming force that he seems to be driven by pure hatred, then he executes the second enemy by stepping on her head. Zui orders the last two and the party, but even as they manage to strike Akatsu, the demon shows that he won't be stunned by attacks of that level, then he grabs the servants by the skull and smashes their faces into the ground. Seeing that the tables have turned, the angel intervenes personally without the same arrogance as before, but when he tries to turn the tide back with his sword, the demon grabs the blade as if it weren't sharp steel, while his back seemed to develop a magical substance similar to the formation of a wing. Then he punches Zui, sending him flying to the other side of the park at an absurd speed, making even Lily worry about her brother's life. 
Without understanding anything, Swaya had never seen a demon with those strange black wings and even Lily wondered if this is indeed the Akatsu she knew assuming his true form. As the boy approaches, Lily tries to talk to him. But all Akatsu does is emit a diabolical laugh, ignoring his friend, only to then attack Swaya again, this time indicating that he would take the angel's life at that insane pace of violence. Lily had already realized this, so she screams at Akutsu to stop assaulting her brother. The demon turns with his evil eyes to the girl, who doesn't know what to make of the violent aura her friend exudes. And when Akutsu delivers another powerful blow to the mighty Zwei, he reflects on how curious this young devil is, a creature of darkness offended by the suffering of a little angel like Lily. Remembering his childhood, Zwei himself, when he was younger than his sister is now, never knew how to act like an older brother should towards her. And he had never been able to feel the same hatred a demon felt when seeing the little one being humiliated in front of him, quite the contrary. Now, in the end, who knows if it's this monster that will teach a lesson to the angel. However, before Akatsu's final judgment, Lilia Mane steps in front of her brother to prevent him from returning to heaven earlier. Meanwhile, in hell, Liz organizes the paperwork to mobilize assistance for her subordinate. While feeling a genuine pleasure in finally putting into practice something she always wanted to do. In the meantime, Lily tries to put some sense into her classmate's head, convincing him that if Sui dies by his hands, Akatsu will be hunted throughout paradise until he's eliminated as a top priority target. And as if things couldn't get worse, Lily has the nerve to defend her brother, saying that he may sometimes overstep, but he never physically harmed her. However, without wanting to hear the story, Akatsu hits Lily and pushes her aside. For the first time, Sui feels the rage of seeing his sister being hurt, but instead of reacting, it's the girl herself who tries to restrain the demon with her chains. He easily frees himself and attacks Lily again, but as she already knows he's not easing up even for her, the girl dodges the blow and realizes that even activating Akatsu's collar made no difference, the control she had over him had gone down the drain. Moreover, there were six wings on Akatsu's back before and now there are only five, so Lily becomes increasingly confused by everything that's happening. Faced with a new onslaught from the demon, this time it's Zwei who helps his sister and comments that she really is a master at bringing trouble, and explains that probably the wings of that demon have the same essence as the angels because they are responsible for storing energy, and in this case, Akatsu spent part of his reserve when he exerted so much strength and speed in his attacks. Thus, it's possible that he'll return to normal once all of his wings are consumed, however, Zwei doesn't even dream of holding onto the demon until that happens because he gets physically stronger with each wing that goes away. At most, Zwei commits to trying to spend four wings of the young devil, while Lily must take care of the last one. Hearing this, Lily is surprised that her brother is helping her restore her friend's sanity. On the other hand, Zwei would love to exorcise the demon, but at the same time he saw something interesting in him, and feels he could investigate it further. Either way, the conversation ends when Akatsu attacks again. Lily and Zwei try to restrain the target with their chains, but he breaks free and slams Zwei's head forcefully into the ground. The angel admits he was caught this time, but he's clever enough to use his unfavorable position to counterattack masterfully, spreading his angel wings and using them as razors that tear through the demon's wings in a masterful strike, leaving only one to tell the tale. Meanwhile, now the darkness's power is at its highest level, and knowing this, we grabs his sister's attention to finish the job before a catastrophe occurs. Lily uses a clone of herself to take a colossal punch from a kutsu, and with the advantage of the mistake made by her rival, she remembers that from the beginning, the two always end up on opposite sides of life's ring. However, the more time they spend together, the more Lily questions if there's something about this creature that they don't teach in history books. Even though she has known Akatsu for a short time and doesn't know everything that runs through that infernal heart, she knows he is much more stubborn, more clownish, more perverted, more idiotic, and above all, much kinder than that. With this version of Akatsu pulsating in her mind, Lily begins to cry and faints while being held in her friend's arms. Sui asks if he'll have to get up again to continue the feud against the demon, but Akatsu tells him to cut the crook talk because he has been listening to the conversations since halfway through the fight and knows that something has changed in Zui regarding his sister. But if he ever disturbs her life again, he'll be the one seeing hell again. So when Akatsu leaves, Zui thinks again that this demon is indeed very curious, while exhaustively observing the approaching sunset. Later, when he lays Lily to rest in his house, the young man counts down to unbutton her dirty blouse's second button because he has a deep disgust for dirty clothes on his bed, but he can't unbutton her shirt at all. Then he tries to wake the blessed one by calling her name, but no reaction occurs. When he considers the previous strategy again, the little angel on his shoulder reminds him that it's not cool to undress an unconscious girl, while the little devil believes that Lily owes them after being heroically saved from her stupid brother. Suddenly, her older sister, Lilia, offers to do the dirty work and begins to remove her sister's shirt on the spot and right at the beginning of the service, Akatsu spontaneously combusts. 
Finally, after everything is ready, the guy at least had the decency to wait outside, so Lilia calls him to talk on the rooftop. But when she was about to pull him up, Akatsu sees her bruise on her wrist, and wanting to know the origin of the wound, the girl explains that it's the result of her useless stubbornness in trying to break her shackles. Earlier, while Zwei humiliated her little sister, all the suffering and anguish she felt were passed on to the angel trapped inside her, who tried to break the seal to free herself and save her younger sister. But all she got as a result was this painful bruise on her wrists. Seeing that Lilia witnessed this whole scene, Akatsu takes the opportunity to ask what he did, and what he looked like after all he lost consciousness at a certain point in the story. In response, the angel mentions that she has met many demons throughout her existence, but that Akatsu was by far the most repulsive of all she'd ever seen because she witnessed the pleasure he took in ruthlessly trampling his enemies. Above all, he had the courage to attack Lily herself when she tried to intervene, and that was the worst part of it all. Despite everything, Lily remembers that Akatsu wasn't acting on his own and knowing him as she does now, she knows that Akatsu would never do that of his own free will. Still, the angel would like to know how the demon reached this point and he explains that apparently he was taken over by anger, having been controlled by it in the face of Zui's disgusting behavior and cutting off his friend's wings in front of him with that expression of contempt. At some point, he managed to regain his consciousness, but still, his body didn't respond to his impulses. Anyway, Akatsu realizes that none of this justifies the way he acted against Lily, so he feels devastated for hurting his friend. On the other hand, Lilia really doesn't judge the demon for his actions because she remembers that as soon as he appeared in that park, Lily no longer felt fear or anger, but something strangely comforting. So she brings up the reason she called Akatsu, saying that her younger sister has always suffered from the family's rigidity until Lilia came into her life. From a very young age, the little one endured quietly all kinds of injustice, and to gain approval and survive in this world, Lily desperately tried every way she could. As Akatsu knows well, the girl still managed to be intelligent and kind, but the demon completely destroyed that. Every time Zwei acted in that way, Lily could recover and be herself again, but now that Akatsu jumped in front this time and defeated her brother, Lily lost her usual place. And for all this, the older sister of the angel cries and thanks the demon for what he did. Next week, we'll have more of this anime as soon as the new episode is released, so go ahead and subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to hit the like button below to support this video. See you guys.